Keltec is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. How come I don't have a pyramid air discount code? You do. Because well, we just met. Oh, that's true. You could just do that. You use ton of checkout. Twenty dollars off any purchase over a hundred dollars. What if it's a what if it's a ten dollar purchase? It's not over a hundred dollars. Oh, it's gotta be over a hundred dollars. Stipulation. Ton practice fit in the mirror, so you gotta you gotta let him I'll know. let him pick that. Get it. All right, let's do this. Leadhead, welcome back to another episode. Uh, you want to do the intro, Tim? Oh, hell no. Do it. You've been on here enough. Do it. Come on. <laughs> oh, dude. T- Come on. Your co-host do today. This to me. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> Lead us in, man. Lead us welcome, in. Welcome, Leadheads. Welcome back to another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Today we have not only my good friend, Marty Lefty, but we have my... Also, partner in crime, Tyler Patner from Pyramid Air. Yay, and this Tyler! Is the original fat bastard, Tun Jones, that is haunting poor Lefty like usual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was yeah, it was okay. It was just, yeah, all right. That's what happens when you put me on the spot. That's all right. I like it. Good things happen with spontaneity. We like spontaneity. <laughs> Innovation and spontaneity is is what we love on this show. So as you heard it. Leadheads, we are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast, bringing you all the lead education that we've been doing for ten years, educating the uneducated here on the Talking Lead Podcast, and uh, we hope we've done a little bit. I mean, we have more fun, I think, than we do education, but uh, yeah, that's part of the show. Part of the show, exactly. And no other show rewards their listeners like Talking Lead. I think we give away more. Thank yous to our listeners than any other podcast out there. What do you what, do you, what would you say? Would you oh, say yeah. yay or Dude, nay? Without a doubt. So weren't, weren't you on the last episode, Ton? Uh, two episodes ago. Was it two episodes ago? Two episodes ago. Okay. Was that the one where we had Pierce on and we were talking about the the pistol brace? Oh yeah, the pistol brace. That's me and me and the lawyer. Yeah, that's right. That's Love right. that dude. Yeah, I gotta get him. I gotta. I seriously need a lawyer. <laughs> Well, he's in Georgia, so I don't think he could help you in uh, Texas there. So, Dude, there's a chance I could commit a crime in any state just by being me. That's true. Dude. That's true. Let's, dude, look at and me. And you're going out of state coming up, and we're going to talk about that. You've got a competition oh, yeah. coming up. We want to talk about that. Uh, and there's a specific reason why we have Ton on again today, other than we love having him on. Um, he's brought his friend, as he introduced Tyler Patner and Tyler is with Pyramid Air, and we kind of got a theme going on there. So there's something going on with the the law and air guns, and we want to talk about that. And Tyler is just the person to fill us in on this. So we're we're going to talk about that in this episode. Uh, but first, make sure you go and support all those that make this show possible, especially with Father's Day coming up. This is the prime time to use these discount codes that are exclusive to you listeners, to you leadheads. Mission First Tactical. They have a whole slew of new products at Mission First Tactical uh, that you guys need to check out. And they've got more coming, and I don't think I can talk about them yet, but they're awesome what they've got coming out. But they've got uh, their, their leather holsters, their, their hybrid leather Kydex holsters. They've got them in black now. So that's new. So you guys can go and, and check those out, get those, use that discount code LEADHEAD, get 20% off. Any of their, anything on their website, really. So they've got drinkware, they've got holsters, they have AR accessories, they have AK grips, which are my favorite AK grips. Uh, so Really? Yeah. Yeah, I've got them. You see them back there or not, but... I've got like four of my AKs have the the grips on them. Uh, I need some new grips. They're really nice. And I do. I was just showing ton. I did a little early Father's Day shopping, even, even though I'm not a father. Uh, this was Memorial Day. Memorial. I got these on Memorial Day. Um, Anderson of uh, manufacturer <laughs> had these on sale for thirty five bucks. These lowers. Damn. Um, lower receivers, strip lower receivers, and if you're not watching. The video, it is. Ton, tell them what that is. A dude, that's the Punisher Trump. 
There's, <laughs> they have a, a Punisher with a Trump hairdo. Dude, that the is Punisher skull. Shit. So it's gotta be a good mashup name for that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll come up with something. But uh, I ordered several of these, but and then fa- found out that this week Palmetto State Armory has their lowers on sale for thirty dollars. Twenty nine ninety nine for for a lower. I don't think they're going to get any cheaper than that. So, oh God, no. Those are like pre twenty twenty prices. The, yeah, even ARs are. I've seen ARs below four hundred dollars that you can complete AR rifle. Now is the time to buy, guys. You know, you know how we talk about, you know, the day back in the day. This is back in the day right now. This is the time to go and buy your firearms because they're probably not ever going to be any cheaper. And with all the the bullshit that we've been experiencing with the government, uh, with the rules and regulations, with the pistol braces, you know, there's only more to come. So get them while you can. And Father's Day is a great time to not only buy for yourself, but have others buy for you if you're a father. Or buy your father some cool stuff. And seal one. Seal one and done. CLP. You're going to buy all those guns. You're going to need something to keep them clean, lubricated, protected from corrosion. Seal one. They're complete gun uh, care kits. You can get those. You can get the individual items. And they have the uh, cleaning rod kits. What father doesn't need a good pistol or rifle cleaning rod kit? You can get those at seal one now. And use the code LEADHEAD, get 25% off anything on their website. Still one and done, baby. Check them out. Uh, and then, of course, our good buddies at Caltech can't get a discount on their firearms, but you can get a discount on anything in their pro shop. Any of their apparel, their accessories, their kit, their gear that they've got there, you can get, I believe it is 15% off. Use the code LEADHEAD there. And I've got more that I'll give you throughout the show. So we've got lots of codes. I think we might even have one from uh, from our, our new guest here. And Tyler's a new guy. I, I'm going to hit you with the new guy questions today, Tyler. <laughs> You're going to get the Lay new guy, on, new man. guy, new guy questions. So we'll do that um, post-show. Uh, but we're going to continue our NRA interviews in this show also, Leadhead. So this should wrap up uh, our last round of NRA interviews here and we're going to have the guys from Genesis Arms sit down and join us. Uh, if you've watched John Wick 4 John Wick Wick uh, the shotgun that he's using in that uh, is from Genesis Arms. So he's, have you seen have you guys seen it yet? You seen I no. haven't yet. Oh, uh, well, I can't give it away. Then. I was busy watching Mario Brothers. <laughs> The perils of having You're celebrating days. Pride Month, aren't you there, Ton? <laughs> Keep it up, Turbo. <laughs> Keep it up. While you're in that tanning um, bed. Hey, it's Pride. Gonna happen to your pride vehicle. it doesn't say it doesn't have to just be Dude, LGBQ DB. It could be two A in the gym and in the tanning bed. It could be awful tanning bed take. pride. It could be gym pride. It could be what do you call it? Yeah. A double double bacon double cheese. Double, double, oh, double, double animal style, animal style fries in and out, baby. Let's do it right. Pride. There you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, those interviews, and we've got Aculus Defense. We've got Joe and Zach, and I don't know if you guys know or not, but Zach is a recent. He's recently new dad, so he's going to be celebrating uh, Father's Day, and he had his little baby there, little Zach Junior. I think he calls him. Uh, I can't remember his name. It's like Thor or no, it's not Thor. What's his kid's no. name? It'll come to That'd me. Be in a strong, Oscar. Though. It's Oscar with a K. Not it's O S K A R. Hmm. My new baby has a first name. It's O S K A R. Remember that oh, baloney yeah. commercial? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oscar Meyer hot dogs. Oscar Meyer hot dogs in baloney. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. So, good interviews there. I saved the best for last. These are really good interviews. I know you guys are going to love these. So, um, What are you trying to say? My interview is shit? What are you talking about? 
Yeah, you saved the best for last. You, we didn't do that. just an interview with you. We didn't have a ton I, interview. I know you didn't have time for my fat ass. <laughs> They're like, I'm gonna get the pretty people up here. Oh, I, I think don't. it was quite the opposite. Who's going? You didn't have time for me. I came by. You I'm did, just, and and you were on a couple. We had you on a couple of interviews. Yeah. Guest starring Ton Jones. Unlike Star that. of <laughs> what's that TV show? Don't start with me. Don't start with me, princess. <laughs> Where's your blazer at? My blazer. It's Pride Month. Where's your blazer my camel hair at? blazer? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't dress up for you guys today. I do have in honor of. Uh, California burning. I've got my California <laughs> Wolverines. Of course, it's Canada, but isn't that the same thing as California? Yeah, pretty much. Canada. Thanks, Canada, and, for all the smoke poison that you're sending our way. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining Tommy our Nissan. summer. I love my Canadian listeners. I'm just kidding. You know I'm just kidding. So, I know it's beyond your control. I think lightning or something started this round of of wildfires, but uh, they'll be out soon. This round. Never fear. Hey, look, at it's a good, because it's choking out New York. <laughs> New York's getting choked out. I'm pretty sure I don't have a lot of listeners in New York, so uh, if we do Never have honor. listeners in New York and it, it sucks right now for you, come to Tennessee. We'll take care of you. Yeah, don't underestimate the uh, the upstate New Yorkers, man. They're, oh, upstate all, New Yorkers are awesome. All about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I got some friends you, upstate. What's your beverage of choice this evening? So t- tonight I am enjoying a um, Bombay Sapphire and Red Bull. Because I need a little pick-me-up <laughs> from today. Too, too much time at the gym? Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the smoke <laughs> from Canada. This is what it is. I don't know. <laughs> So uh, we've got something going on in the air gun world, and it's actually in in the toy gun world. Is kind of where this all stem f- stems from. But uh, you know, it's just a prime example of government overreach. And I want Tyler to to fill us in on kind of what what the uh, shakedown is here. Do we doing jack wagons? We're gonna do jack wagons uh-huh. second half okay. of the show. So all right, it's coming up. All right. So uh, basically what's going on, um, this is this like legislation regulation change is aimed at toy guns. But the problem is, as it typically is with the government, uh, they are not very clear on what toy guns are being defined as. So uh, there's yeah, could even be that little guy who the heck knows. Welcome to the wonderful world of the federal government right now. Yep. And um, I'm holding so up a keychain cap gun. Is what I'm holding up. It, it could be on the list, man. Seriously. Uh, basically, the so last year, um, the air gun industry and and like airsoft, uh, even what's sitting behind Ton right there, which is a, a gel blaster. Um, I, I can't remember what brand that is that's sitting right there, Ton. What is that? I have to send him. He's got a look. You know. Yep. That's the splat ball gel blast. Splatter ball, that's right. All right. It's like a 3D uh, printed gun. Yeah, it's all plastic, but it's supposed to look like a toy because it is a toy, right? Yeah, it shoots yeah. those little gel balls. Uh, they, they sting just enough to let you know you got hit. But they're a lot of fun. Full auto. Dude, hilarious. I'm, yeah, I see you it, took your pistol brace off that. It does not come with one. <laughs> Uh, but basically, like all these, there you go. Hey, easy, dude. Don't do ton. Are you a member of uh, FPC? He re- he re- or? both. He registered his. Well, then he's fine. He registered okay, his because he right? wanted SBRs. All right, keep going. Uh, so basically, last year, uh, the kind of enforcement agency uh, that's in charge of uh, kind of our subset of the industry. Change from the Department of Com- uh, Commerce over to the CPSC, so the Consumer Protection Safety Commission. Um, they're they're usually the the branch involved with doing recalls and stuff like that. Uh, that's that's where most people will be familiar with them from. Uh, so the industry kind of has is part of the ASTM. So uh, non-powder guns are all governed under this kind of ASTM group. 
so we weren't made aware that the CPSC was actually, or CSPC, sorry, was actually looking to change anything until January of this year. Um, and at the time, it was kind of put forth like, you know, oh, it'll be a collaborative process. Like we want to involve everybody and and make sure we're doing uh, everything. I don't want to say by the book, right? But but in a way that's not going to uh, hurt anything. Um, but of course, uh, as it so happens, they just kind of sprung this on everybody recently, uh, last week, in fact. Yeah, like um, real recent. And the cutoff yeah. to do your comments is like the 12th. The 12th. The, yeah. By the time you yeah. guys hear this, it'll, it'll be the deadline. Yeah, yeah. So uh, everybody's having to react really quickly. Um, but basically, the the issue is is twofold. One that they were that all this stuff was fast tracked, and the other part of it is that the way the regulation changes are written are very vague. Um, you can actually go over to our website. We have a, a link. Vague. To the government being vague on their laws and right. rules. Why would they ever do that? Um, the interesting part of, of most of this is that, you know, they use the, the phrase toy guns. And then within this article, they, they do actually call out um, like airsoft guns or, or things that don't fire a metal projectile. Well, the, the problem with that is like airsoft guns are not technically toy guns. They, they're replicas, right? Um, and, and they shouldn't be treated as toy guns. I mean, they look that up like the real thing and they have that orange tip on them for a reason. Um, it's not you know, what ton has behind him, which shoots a little kind of gel ball that that's not going to hurt anybody. Uh, they could certainly, you know, if you're not wearing your safety gear, take an eye out or something. Um, so they should be treated with the same respect. And uh, it's very unclear where the uh, CPSC in this case is actually going to take aim at, right? Like what, what parts of the non-powder gun industry they're actually looking at here because they say toys, but within so what are the they, content. What yeah, are ahead. they, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what are they actually, what's the big fear? What's the big, um, why is everybody upset about this? I guess. Sure. So I, I think and why should everybody which, be upset about it? Because there's a yeah, legitimate well, reason. This, yeah. The speed at which it's happening for sure. Right. Like you're trying to sneak one by. That's how everybody is kind of perceiving this. But the, the bigger part of this is that there are actually some the changes they're calling out require um, like independent testing agents uh, for the product that's never been done before in the industry. But the agents that they're calling for to be these testers have to be certified or selected by the CPSC. Um, or CSPC, sorry, I'm going to butcher that this whole time and I apologize. Um, so there, it, you're kind of all of a sudden walking into one of these uh, situations where one day they could just say, yeah, no more of this, right? Because our testing agency doesn't, uh, doesn't like your product anymore or like your company or where the product comes from, whatever standards they're made to, uh, and say no more products subjective. for you. It's just subjective. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, potentially, right? And and again, um, I cannot see inside the minds of the folks that have written this. Uh, but uh, you know, having lived through one or two uh, interesting pieces of legislation as it relates to anything gun, you know, you never know where it's going to go and where somebody's going. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, and so the reality is, is that this is a bit of an affront to uh, our entire industry because depending on the agency that gets involved with this uh, alongside the CSPC, you could very well see air guns, BB guns, airsoft guns become kind of fall under this where, where all of a sudden, Oh yeah, you have to get your stuff, you know, gone through by this independent testing agency. Uh, that's not really independent because we approved it, you know, and, the, and this is the only place you can go. And oh, by the way, they're going to say no to whatever you want to bring into the country. So it's uh it, it it's potentially very hard. Is it more for Im businesses. importation than domestic made things? Yeah, so it, more for imported goods. Yeah, things coming from, but it, it's not clear as to where, right? So this is not one of those things where they're going, oh, anything made in China, right? They're they're just leaving it ambiguous, and potentially this could affect something that's made in Germany, England, uh, which we have a lot of suppliers from there. Um, South Africa, you know, like any country uh, where it's an import could potentially be on the list is my understanding. 
Okay. And so is it more just about them uh, adding air guns and airsoft to to their regula- regulatory list and they're going to be handling it the same way or possibly the same way that they're going to handle the toy guns? That's the concern, right, is that, that air guns and airsoft guns get wrapped up in this um, because, again, they should not be considered a toy gun and aren't currently considered that. But because of the way this regulation change is written, um, it is pretty ambiguous as to what they're talking about. And that's where the concern for the industry comes from. So I, I can't find it right now, but what I was reading about it, um, it has to do with the coloration uh, of the the guns, you know, if it's a mm-hmm. toy gun. But then there was also a section that I was reading that said specifically not included in this are, you know, air-powered, yep. you know, basically air guns and airsoft guns weren't included in this yeah but they're, they're the use of the phrase like non-powder gun applies to air guns under astm regulations as well as airsoft guns so again they're using very um they're, they're like looping ambiguous in certain language yeah yeah um but they're, they're using certain language that gives everybody involved kind of a, a the the chills on the back of the neck you know where yeah. you're like uh this could go wrong real fast so yeah. so you know well go ahead no, I was going to say, so historically, um, so what caused this was the the um, department or government agency that, that used to handle it, they've lumped it all together. And was it two separate agencies that handled it or, or departments that handled it before? Uh, no, I think it was still under the Department of Com- or Commerce uh, for toy guns as well. Um, but they're very, the, the rules and regulations around them are very different. Um, so like if, if you were to go through and read the ASTM standards for air guns or airsoft guns, um, th- this is, these are things that the industry's come together on to lay out requirements for the warnings that need to be on the gun itself, the packaging, um, and even the markings, right? So, right. uh, where you have caliber listed on the side of the gun, there's a format for the way you're supposed to do that. And they have specific that. colors too. They've got like color, like the color codes that are supposed to be used for that orange and... You know, different oh, specific yeah, sure. for green and yeah. blues, and I mean they've got like specific. So if you're outside of that, let's say you get a number off, but it's blue, but it's not that blue, you could be in violation or you could be in trouble. You get fined potentially. Yeah, and and so and that's just toys. What, They're just talking like Nerf guns or water guns, even. Well, and this thing behind ton, right? So. This yeah. is where the the my understanding is this is where it's supposed to be uh, directed um, it, are at kind of this this kind of nerf and and uh, these water gel blaster guns that that you see behind ton there um, and and there's part of this where they're going to be they're looking to impose some requirements on the coloration that it has to be translucent. Um, things we've seen before, states like California have tried to do with airsoft guns specifically. Um, you know. It, I don't think anybody, uh, I could be wrong, of course, but I don't think anybody's going to confuse that thing behind ton, well, the, the gray and blue thing behind ton, uh, for, for a real firearm. But uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've uh, assumed incorrectly before about people. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, and here's the thing, too, is people have gotten so personalized with their real firearms. I mean, there's some that look like Legos now. You know, people have gone out of yeah. their way to make it look like it was, like it's a Lego gun, but it's an actual real you know, firearm, which I have no problem with that whatsoever. Sure. But, uh, I mean, I could see where the government wants to get, you know, just use that as an excuse is like, oh, well, if you're going to make it look like a toy, then we're going to start, you know, adding extra regulations and, and bullshit on there. Yeah. And, and that's really where the concern comes from. You know, part of, part of the, uh, you know, this whole piece with, with this independent testing agency and that's, that's kind of sanctioned by the the CSPC that's so concerning is, is that, you know, what if all of a sudden they just decide to impose more standards that they're not making anybody aware of in a timely fashion, you know, because uh, anybody that deals with shipping something from overseas knows that it takes time to get product from, you know, either Asia or Europe. Like if you put it on a boat, it's going to take oh, yeah, I mean, a month, especially month with the, 
you know, when we had the COVID going through the COVID uh, yeah. bullshit. So, God, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, mean, you were talking about three months and then it would hit the, you know, it would hit Los Angeles or hit New York and it'd be there for another yeah. month, so, you know, so, just getting sorted through. There were so many billions of dollars that people made off COVID that I guarantee you we will have another one. There will be another yeah. pandemic hit us in the next 10 years. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, you know. It, Mark but, my words. Uh, and I'm again, using finger you, quotes you, when I say pandemic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you supposed to do as a company, though, when you've had product on the water for a month and then all of a sudden regulations change overnight like this, right? And and that's really concerning as well is that, you know, there is no, as at least that I'm aware of, there is no grace period, right? We found out about this a week ago, two weeks ago now, uh, and you're talking about implementation on June 26th. Yeah, so, but the, you only have until the 12th to state your yes. case and put your comments in, yeah. and then yeah. this are those even being made public? Yeah, they are. So th that's part of the reason we have that on our uh, on our site. So you can just go over to uh, pyramidair.com slash CSPC, and uh, you can literally just copy uh, a generic statement of opposition, go to the link, paste it in, put your name in, or you don't have to. You can do it anonymously and uh, and oppose it. Um, now the, the problem with that as well, as they said, if they get enough opposition that, uh, they will, uh, kind of pull back and go through a, the normal, uh, change process for this kind of regulation where, uh, it takes months, if not longer than that to do this, yeah. uh, versus being fast tracked as they now another here. thing that they're saying, and the reason that they are, you know, this isn't, again, this isn't a law, this is a rule, so it doesn't have to go through the Senate or, you know, any sort of uh, our governmental uh, voting procedures. S uh, and they're saying that the reason that it's not is because uh, economic, the economic impact isn't, doesn't reach a certain dollar amount. Uh, and I think their dollar amount is like what a hundred million or something like that is it has to exceed like a hundred or, Hundred million, two hundred million. I think they're thinking of raising it to like two hundred million or something like that. But so again, you know, overreach there. Yeah, yeah, and and that's again like it, this just screams kind of like everybody worries about slippery slope stuff with uh, with firearms regulations, right? Yeah, yeah. You you take you take our bump stocks today. What are you going to take tomorrow? Well, uh, they're going to attempt to take pistol braces tomorrow, and then what's next, right? Yeah. Um, this is the same idea, uh, just with non-powder guns, yes. and, and that's really the concern. So you guys can go to pyramidair.com and um, slash CSPC, and uh, Tyler has the CP, CSPC regulation changes to airsoft guns. Basically, what you need to know right there, why this uh, is impacting the firearms industry and air gun, you know, airsoft air guns, it's firearms industry. It's still, you know, part of, part of our industry. And, uh, you can still, still go and, and fill out this. Um, it, I guess it's just a comment. Is that what they call it? It's not a complaint it's just a comment yeah. section. Yep. And, and send it in. Um, you still need to do that even after the deadline, even if you're hearing this after the deadline, let's just keep inundating them, you know, inundating them with this, uh, just so they can't ignore it. Yeah, this is not not dissimilar to what happened with uh, pistol braces. What was that a year or two ago? When uh, you know when uh, the ATF opened it up for comment originally uh, on their point system that they were looking to implement uh, way back, and then you know yeah. enough people got pissed off and responded to this. You know, basically saying like, yeah. But here's stand. another thing too: is if it's a significant amount of people, well, what's significant? What does that mean? Yeah. What's their definition of significant? None. No definition. Are they basing it on the world population? They oh, you would think it'd be population of the U.S. You would think yeah. it would be because that's yeah. the, you know, the only, but, you know, even then, are they basing it on just the population of the United States or? Right. Right. Yeah. If it's, if, if so you've got 330 a, million people in the country. And what, do they what, use the same the standard for every, you know, not just sure. the firearms industry, but every industry that they go and they do something like this too? Do they use the same percentage amount or? Is it just an arbitrary number that they, and do we get to see how many people submit their 
Uh, I do think that, yeah, I do think the comments are public um, record. So you can do it anonymously. You don't have to. Right. But do we uh, get to see the total number? Do we get to see there was right here? I'll send it to you. 300,000 people. But here's the thing, too. They only count it if you follow the exact procedures that they have to file your comment. And if you you miss one of those little 15 things that you've got to do, then it doesn't count. So, but yeah, you right guys have it set up. You've made it easy peasy on your website, right? You just go there and you put your name in that little thing and you send that, and it it's dotting all the i's and crossing all the t's, right? Yep. So yeah, it'll be exactly just copy paste, and you should be. Just so fine. it'll be counted. Yeah, there's twelve thousand sixty eight comments so far. But here's the thing that's pissing me off. If you go back to see when the document was supposedly received or created it was on may 10th i'm like okay and then but it wasn't open for and it says open from comments from the 10th till may 10th till june 12th but the problem is they did not open it for comments till june 3rd it was, you could not see or view or actually get to the document till june 3rd yeah and so they cut everything in half well yeah, they more than half. They cut it down to less than a third. It gives you no time at all for comments, and then they're going to blindside everybody with this rule change. Probably a bunch of government people working from home, ton. Dude, don't get me started. <laughs> they don't show up to the office. They just do everything from their bed when they get up in the morning, right? That That is actually uh, maybe not entirely not true. Uh, I, I've had to call the DOT a bunch in the last uh, six months or so, and... and Good Lord. I mean, trying to get a hold of anybody. Oh, you have to dial this extension because this person's still working from home. So is this person. This entire department is, you know, yeah. as somebody that uh, I guess is privileged to work a, a semi hybrid schedule where, where uh, you know, I, I can take my mornings at home to catch up on my emails. This is a perfect time. So is there anything else that we need to know about this rule before we cut into our NRA uh, interviews here? No, the, the, that's the important stuff. It's really just about getting uh, getting voices out there and, and making everybody heard and hopefully um, slowing this process down because that's really the goal and, and actually giving the industry an opportunity to right. weigh in on some of this ambiguity. All right. All right, Leadhead. So go to pyramidair.com. Uh, go to that link. Fill that uh, form out and be heard. And buy something while you're there and use code TON at checkout. If you spend over $100, you get $20 off. That was smooth, man. That was nice. You just picked right up on that. Damn straight. Perfect Father's Day gift right there. It's good that TON does that because I will probably never do that, even (laughs) though that's where I work. So Shameless plug. (laughs) Well, before we we break, talk about Pyramid Air, what it is that you guys do. Sure, yeah. So uh, Pyramid Air has been in business for over 25 years. Uh, We are the world's largest air gun retailer, uh, online air gun retailer anyway. Uh, But we also sell crossbows, uh, vertical bows. we got paintball guns. We've even got e-bikes on our website. There's all sorts of wild stuff. I have Uh, that. I have that. So I've, I've just pulled up there. It's behind the shirt. Hold on. Nice. Keep talking. Yeah, but... Yeah, we, we sell uh, mostly air guns, but we sell a lot of other stuff, knives, uh, you know, whatever you want, really. Uh, tons of optics, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. There you go, Air Force air guns. There's the that, Texan. That makes ton happy. You can get them on a discount right now, too, which only happens like twice a year. So yeah. definitely worth checking out. But yeah, whether you're into uh, crossbows, big game air gun hunting, Plinking in your backyard, replica, pistols, rifles, all of the above, we sell it. Yeah, so the uh, the Wrath 436X, or 430X. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I got this last year, and this was my first archery kill. Nice. I used with the, the Wrath. But hey, if you need bolts, broadheads, I need anything, them. we sell it. Oh. Use code TON at checkout. If you spend over a hundred bucks, you get twenty bucks off. Just saying. Nice. Plus, there is so a rebate right now. Rebate madness. Go back to that on the uh, Center Point Rass. Uh, yeah. Two hundred twenty dollars off. Yeah, it's a wild wow. promotion. So definitely uh, worth checking out if you're in the market for a crossbow for 
deer season later this year. Very nice. And then uh, yeah. you want to check out all the details on Air Force Air Guns, you go to their website, airforceairguns.com. And you guys sell these, don't you, uh, at Pyramid Air? Yeah. Yep, oh, absolutely. Hell yeah. And so, the Talon Bolt is shipping pretty much any time. It's shipping now. Is By the time the, this comes out, yeah. That's the new arrow gun that, that uh, Ton and I got to go have shenanigans with. In uh, in Texas last year. Yeah, thanks for inviting Dude. me. Well, there was a height limit. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the tanning bed when I made that call. Perfect segue to our NRA interviews, guys. <laughs> so here's Genesis Arms, Atlas Defense. Enjoy these, and we'll see you guys on the tail end of this. Come back because we got the Jack Wagon Train, and we got new guy questions. Don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> hey Leadheads, White Settle with Seal One. Just here to talk to you and tell you a little bit about our product. Seal One CLP Plus is a bio-based, non-toxic product. It comes in a paste, liquid, aerosol, and pre-saturated bore-specific patches called Seal Skins. They all do the same thing, just different methods of application. The best way to use our product is to start with a clean firearm. And there's two reasons why I say that. First, you start with the Seal 1 CLP Plus by field stripping your firearm and covering the entire firearm inside and out, bore, barrel, everything with the Seal 1 CLP Plus. You'll see how easy it spreads around. You want to wait about 15 to 20 minutes, then you come back and you want to wipe it all off. So you see how easy it is to put on and remove. And the second reason we say to use a clean firearm is you'll find that it's not clean. We're gonna pull out more carbon that's been left behind with whatever product you've been using before. Okay, it takes about three cleanings. So I like to say a clean shoot, clean shoot, clean shoot, just normal usage before the Seal One CLP Plus has removed whatever product that you were using before and has seasoned the firearm. It's kind of like breaking in a cast iron skillet. And after that first cleaning, you will notice a difference. And with each successive cleaning, you will find that it gets easier and easier to clean. Seal One CLP Plus is a dry lubricant and is designed to work as such. You will find that malfunctions are virtually eliminated when used properly because the majority of all malfunctions are caused to carbon buildup. And with the Seal One CLP Plus, the carbon does not build up. Seal One CLP Plus is safe on all metals, plastics, composites, polymers, rubber, wood, and leather. Seal One CLP Plus is a one and done formulation. No other products are required or needed to clean and lubricate and protect your firearm. That's why we say Seal One and Done. Seal One is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Use the code LEADHEAD for a 25% off discount. He got one. Yeah. Put, put him up to the microphone. Let, let's let's have Oscar say something. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest leadhead. The newest leadhead. I think he's he's saying something. Here, let me change ends. There he goes. I think this is the end that's going to be saying something. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> oh, he's getting ready to let one out. I think we got... Are we getting some conversation? He's gassy. A little bit. Oscar. Oscar with a K. Mm-hmm. Love it. Newest uh, addition to the Atlas Defense family. Joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We got Zach. Hey, so you, put, you can't hear me, can you? Yeah, I can. You hear me now? Put yeah. on that sound better? I don't know if that's on. Yeah, that's yep. on. That's on big time. Got Joe Mo. Join us. What's happening? Ladies and gentlemen. Stephanie, you going to join us? Nope, Stephanie's going to opt out. She's taking Oscar. Take, taking a little Oscar. So that's Zach's new baby. Mm-hmm. So, Zach, tell us about the new addition to the family. Uh, he will be four weeks tomorrow. So he is new-new. He's like brand spanking yeah. new. Yep. Yeah. Fresh and new. Get closer there. Yep. He uh, basically just eats and sleeps and poops. And that's it. Living the good life. It must travel well. I mean, you guys came from Louisiana to... To Tennessee. To and then, Tennessee? Okay. Yep. Took them to a... Uh, I helped teach a class in tactical response this weekend. Oh, okay. And on Monday, we did a machine gun shoot, and we bundled him up and put his little earmuffs on, and he hung back Start and... Start him early. Slept through the whole thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. 
I took Beach on a trip to Camden up to see y'all the first week we got him. Yeah? Yeah, I can't imagine trying to do that with a... It's like a rite of passage, one. right? Yeah. Take him to Camden? Yeah, apparently so. Have yeah. <laughs> of course, all the uh, the ladies there wanted to get baby time. Oh, so. I'll bet. Yeah. I'll bet they did. Yeah, he's a cutie, man. Mm-hmm. Digging it. So we're at the 2023 National Rifle Association annual meeting. Yeah. They're NRAM, is that what it's called? Yeah. NRAM. 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 Yeah. That's what they got. NRAM. And I hear the Trumpster's going to be here today. <laughs> Interesting. I, I heard that. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So I don't know. If that's the benefit of having your own plane, like yeah. you said. Right, yeah. You get your own. You go anytime. Just fly in. Anywhere, yeah. anytime. I think he was in New York this morning. Given depositions, or maybe that was yesterday, but I think it was this morning. Yesterday. I don't yesterday? know. Yesterday? It was yesterday. Well, we'll I don't see. know. Junior's usually here, so mm-hmm. I'm sure, sure we'll probably see him yeah, walking I, around. Especially over here. I don't think he's missed one since. <clears throat> since they canceled it? Yeah. Well, well the uh, 16? Yeah. So 15. Yeah. So 15? And for sure that I know I've seen him, and I've seen him at Wasn't every the one last one that. they had here in <laughs> Indy? No, Houston. Houston was last year. Well, Bef- but before, the, oh, but before, yeah. yeah, before the, yeah, before that was before they canceled before the, yeah. what are they calling it now? The new normal, the COVID, the COVID, yeah, the BS, yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> crazy, the most deadly thing known to man. You know, and people are still wearing the damn mask. Hey, there's no proof that the vaccination kills people yet. I know, I know. There's no proof it helps yeah. them either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm just. So, Ackless Defense, we had you guys on at SHOT Show. Yep. Joe was there. Zach yep. didn't make it. We nah, missed you, buddy. It was a baby. Well, that, yeah. that's understandable. That's understandable. But we're glad that you uh, you brought Oscar with you mm-hmm. here. So. Had a baby as a boy. Yes. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. And and you gave him a nice Nordic yes. Oscar name yeah. with a K. O-S-K-A-R. Yeah. Has it got that little, that little symbol over uh, it? We didn't go that far. Didn't okay. go that far. I think, I think you should anyway. <laughs> That's really hard to find on the keyboard. I'm yeah. not sure how we're going to be able to do the Form 4 for his first suppressor. you got to Google it. It tells you how to do that. I don't know if the ATF forms It's like a it. shift something. Yeah, and then hit. Shift Alt 163 or something. Something like that, yeah. And it'll pop up with that little scars guard or whatever yeah. it's called. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, Joe was telling me that uh, you guys, can we talk about it? Which one? The, the Zach's little monster? Yeah. 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 The ZLM. Zach's okay. Little Monster, ZLM. <laughs> we were trying to figure out which one we're going to call Zach's Little Monster. If we have this one yet or the shotgun. Oscar 2. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I was not. It's in the works. I was I was super excited about it. And then, of course, when you go to a, a big shoot and you hype something like that, it did not run at all. Did it not? Like, like choked every single magazine, everything. We ran Just probably like 100 something rounds through it at the shop, test firing it. Ran like a top. Yeah, flawless. And I know when I get back to the shop and test fire it to it'll see run fine again. what it's doing, yeah, it'll be back to running perfect. Oh, my God. Ran great. Not super, super fast like you like some of the others, but this one was so, still fast. So yeah. tell our listeners what we're talking about. Uh, it's a 8-inch barreled open bolt Sega 12. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about as pointless and useless as you could make a gun. But it's also about as much fun as you can But it needs one. to exist. Yes. Yeah. It, it has a place in this world. Yeah. It exists Shooting now. full auto 308 and larger calibers is... It, it, it's up there with what folks like doing, but, like, really starts pushing it. Full auto 12 gauge is another monster. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it's a lot of fun. That's a big monster. Yeah. It'll, it'll walk around on you and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's and fast enough. Three rounds, you're fine. Yeah. Number four, number five, it starts... Going where it wants. Yeah, just goes. Yeah. Get a mind. And of its, it's own. eleven, probably about eleven hundred rounds a minute. So okay. So enough to have fun with. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And what kind of magazine are you using with it? Uh, we were getting the best results out of the five round Sega Max. Okay. Uh, I'd like to find one of the um, MGW twenty five round drums. Oh yeah. But, I mean, if you're gonna shoot full yeah. auto, you gotta have yeah a lot of freaking or rounds. Mag tactic. Mag tactic. Yeah. Drums. The big yeah. aluminum drums. Yeah. 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 Aluminum Man, those things have gotten expensive. Yeah, that's the, you know, like the $1,100 now. So we might just end up making something to, <laughs> to, to, up a little bit to there. work it. 
So is that that's just the kind of a pet project you got going on right now? I wanted to do something cool because uh, I did a um, like I say I went up and helped a little bit for a class at Tactical Response, and then on that Monday we had a machine gun shoot, and I got word that there was going to be some cool shotguns in John Wick Four, which is kind of what the class was based around. We went and saw John Wick in uh, a private showing up in Paris, Tennessee. Uh, Sunday night and then Monday morning was the machine gun shoot okay and then after the machine gun shoot um, gentleman named Rock Galati I know Rock you know Rock yeah. cool cool Rock. guy yeah. has he been on the show Ooh. he's been at the show while we've been doing it but yeah. I don't think he's ever I yeah. think he got on one year I he think. lives in Tennessee now so. I know yeah and he said that he was gonna after the show after four was released John Wick four he's, he was gonna come on and talk about he's it. super busy he like he's He's going to Paris, and then he's going to California, and then he's going somewhere else. Like, the next three months is, like, booked. That sucker. Yeah. So he brought a bunch of the guns from John Wick 4 and a couple other movies. When did you guys movies. do this uh, this shoot? Uh, Monday morning at, uh, at Tactical Response. Oh, I didn't Mark's know anything lines. about it. I would have been there. Yeah. It was... We got to tell Kayla to start following <laughs> Yeah. I just saw Get me in the loop. Yeah. Oh, is she here? Yeah. She should yeah. be here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. she was with J Mac. I ran into J Mac and. Uh, well, I know they're going to do. Uh, those Paul, guys. Paul, mm -hmm. finished at Glock tomorrow. At, at Glock. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they're going to do like a book signing of mm -hmm. James's book that he had started before he passed away. Yep. I was wondering what signing it was. I saw, I just saw it come across, and I was like, well, I got to go see Paul. I figured Paul made a new book. I didn't realize it was James's book. Yeah. I'm going to have to definitely go. Yeah, it's yeah. it's one that he had almost finished, mm -hmm. and then he got with Paul and asked Paul to. Yeah. That's great. To do it yeah. justice for him, and he did. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the four pillars of training. That's it. Yep. The four pillars of training, yep. So, available now on Amazon. Mm hmm So, go to go to Amazon, you can get it. It was um, it was like the top seller there for a while. I don't know if it yeah. still is or not. For a few days at least. I haven't kept yeah. up with it. I had Paul on yeah. um, last month, and mm -hmm. we talked about it, and he was like the number one in, yeah. that, in that category. Mm -hmm. Number one seller. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome sauce. What are you looking at? Uh, the <laughs> tripod like over there. Questioning. You questioned yeah. my tripod? No. No. I, okay. I think that's the one Warren. <laughs> no, that's a Manfrotto. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's I, a, I so that's like. I can't quite a, read the name. I got it at Best Buy. So. Similar design. Who knows? Well, yeah. One of our a Leo sales guys, uh, he's almost like his, the personal, his own rep group, and he just picked up a new. A new vendor that makes some really cool lightweight carbon fiber tripods. I can't can't remember the name of them. I don't either. They're but really, they're really super nice. nice. But the huge, big, robust legs. And I'm like, I go to pick it up. It's like, whoa, oh, wow, well, <laughs> that's nothing. way lighter yeah, than I yeah. thought it could be. Carbon fiber, yeah, they're like five, six hundred bucks MSRP. But oh it, it's, you can put a hog saddle or you can put like a standard setup on it. But they're pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, so we've all been kind of. Uh, checking out all the tripods and hog saddle style setups and things. You see anything here? Interesting. Literally just walked in. Um, saw Silencer Alley over here. Yeah, uh, they, they, say they seem to have grouped you know, like companies together. Mm -hmm. Started, I yeah, I noticed that uh, about, I guess three years ago. Started kind of yeah. getting closer and closer. I think there's a lot of relationships that, that work off of each other. Uh -huh. There's some relationships that are they are kind of Friction. competitors, yeah. Uh, but everybody's right here in this one little area. Well, uh, it's like you know, you go see the silencers; they're all here. Go there, and you get to see them all. Mm -hmm. Well, the e-form system, the e-form system really has changed the way that silencer companies are marketing and selling. Uh, lots of lot new live scan places, uh, new services, and they, they're all being like sold and advertised right here. So, yeah. I mean, silencer ownership is really, really getting so much easier and easier and easier like, almost by by the day. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone to maybe three or four days for being able to full submit on a purchase. Now we can submit e-form fours from prints to sign and documented trust within about 45 minutes. There's Joe, the other Joe. Joe Weir, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Yeah. Baby guns. I saw Joe this morning. <laughs> Baby guns. We were, uh, we actually, he's staying in the same place we are. We went down on the elevator together. Nice. Uh, but yeah, silencers are, are up and coming. So it, what, is, what about fast. the wait time on those? Are we still like a year? 
We're seeing about seven and a half to eight and a half months right now. It's like right at 182 to 186 days. Yeah. So that's where the problem is. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what a lot of people are just like, oh, yeah, I don't want to wait that long to get one. It sucks. Well, it we're does start- suck. Yeah. yeah. The last one I got, it took a year. It took over a year before it got out of jail. And it's just, oh, I was like, oh, shit, I forgot I had it. <laughs> we've, we've got some customers that will submit, and then a few months later they'll come in and they'll get something else. And then a few months later they'll come in and pick they up the first them. one and they'll submit something else. So they, they're, it really only feels like you're waiting a few months before you get to pick up your can yeah. because they're staggering them all out. Yeah. Well, that's one way to do it. Yeah. Keep something in the pipeline. Yeah. 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 I like that. Start it, forget it. But the, the but then when you buy that and then you know a year later you get it and then oh wait there's something else out now. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of our system. Yeah, is you're never stuck with, hey, there's something better now because uh-huh. you can always upgrade it. So yeah. talk about our, talk about the way Atlas does theirs. Well, that's part of our future proof system. Uh, the actual registered serialized part is always going to be um, one of the simplest or most protected parts of the suppressor. So if you have any accidents, issues, baffle strikes, you run over with a car. It's the most robust area. It's out of the path of the bullet in most cases, but it's a survivable, because I mean, stuff happens. Bad ammo, can loosen up. Bad shooters. Yeah. Suppressors. Can on the wrong gun. It's it's not a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we've, we've had 22 cans put on nine millimeters, five, five, six cans put on 30 caliber rifles. Oh my gosh. It happens. We had a... Uh, <laughs> Tell them about the guy at the gun show with the nine millimeter. Which one? The the on the five five six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so guy brings. Did he bring it that show? Now he talked to me at one show. It's like, yeah, it blew up my can. And it's like, what what can was it? It's like, oh, it's one of our pil- the, the Pillum. Like, okay, that's a pistol can. How the how did he blow up a pistol can? I'm thinking, oh, he probably ran on three hundred blackout or something. No, I was running on my Mini 14, and I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Which, what, what? Yeah, I shot a few rounds, all of a sudden it just a got few, loud. A few rounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so it, it actually survived the first round. Well, that's, that's a good indication. Bring yeah. it on, let's take a look at it. Brought it in, the core, it absolutely... Shot it out. Yeah. P- pieces just, just disappeared. The aluminum is not meant for that. It's a lightweight... It's a pistol can. It's a pistol, 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 pistol can. Caliber, it, yeah. You can run it on a full auto 9mm, full auto 300 blackout subsonic all day. They don't have enough heat and pressure to do anything. You can get a couple rounds out, apparently, on a 556 and stuff, but it's way too much heat and pressure. As the aluminum gets hot, it starts losing strength. So, yeah. yeah. But within just a few minutes, we had, a, we had it back up and running and set back up for him. Yeah, oh, the, my because, favorite. Because the, the serialized part, it's was still proof. alive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's protected. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's overbuilt. It's designed with about a three hundred percent safety margin at minimum. Uh, the the core is there to take the brunt of the issues. Uh, but my favorite part was he was still using the piston on it. So I the piston was perfectly fine. Yeah, on five five six. So it on high speed it must have looked like it punching out and just kind of vibrating and wobbling. Yeah, right. it I wish I had video of that one. Yeah, like. I don't think we've had... Well, you could recreate it <laughs> if you wanted we to. Could. We've tried. Yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, we've tested that scenario, and we've not seen a failure like that. We didn't push uh, it as hard as he did, though. Yeah. He probably... He went deep into a magazine pretty quick, I'm guessing. Yeah. But we Spread have not had a suppressor we could not get back up and run it. Yeah. Uh, we've not had such a catastrophic failure. Because we do it on purpose. We take the mm-hmm. cans to the absolute limit. We... Multiple we, we times. We melted another one over the weekend. Did at you? the machine gun shoot, put it on a 7-inch um, uh, Adams Arms piston okay. upper and ran, I don't know how many mags through it. When I looked over at one point and they were still shooting it, it, glowing? it was glowing white, hot, and bright sunlight. Oh, my God. So I'm guessing that 18, 1900 degree range for the stainless. 17.4 and doesn't really like that. So. At some point, it reaches a threshold to where basically you're at forging temperature for the metal on the inside it's soft plastic yeah and it lets go yeah there's too much pressure from the cartridge being fired that it just elongates parts of the core which are designed as the weakest point Mm -hmm. so the core leaves but the core is not attached to the tube 
So the tube guides the core downrange where you're already sending bullets. The tube is still there protecting and everything for right. people to the side because it was multiple people shooting at the machine gun shoot and I don't want anything leaving out the 90 on the can. Yeah. So there's yeah. some other lead heads out there, little young lead heads. Yeah. Some people build cans to not fail, which ends up being a very heavy, yeah, not great performing can, not a lot of volume inside. Uh, but we design it because it happens. We want lightweight, easy to use cans. It's designed to gracefully fail if you get it past the point nope. of what it's rated for. Which, which it's no, usually about 15 mags on that gun, back to back, and they were running he bigger mags at the shoot too. Like guys that brought their own uh, 100 round Surefires and um, D60s and stuff. So I don't know exactly how many rounds went through it, but like I say, it was in that 1900 degree range, which mm -hmm. is where the, the internal structure can't take the pressure anymore. Now with your with your program, as far as uh, being able to trade in, trade up kind of mm -hmm. deal, how's that work? Uh, it's it's part of the future-proof technology. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't received the can yet, you're gonna get the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you have already had the can and you want to do a voluntary upgrade, there's a monetary uh, small fee mm -hmm. just to kind of recoup. What's Typically, the it's the core. Uh, it depends on the, depends on the, on the can. can. Like the yeah. 22, it's about 120 bucks. On the nine millimeter, it's about 180 bucks. Yeah. Centerfire cans might be. But you don't have to go through the whole. No. The no. whole. Um, There's yeah. no process. Licensing like, thing again. Like the can no. he fixed for the guy at the gun show, he literally took one of our demo cores that we had sitting on the table, put his tube over it, screwed it back together, and sent the guy on his way with his can. Okay. Takes like a couple minutes. Nice. The one I blew up at the range the other day. We'll, um, I'll take it back to the shop, take the tube off, take the old core out, what's left of it, inspect everything, put a new tube on it, new core, new end cap, and be ready to go. And, out the door. Yeah, five, ten minutes. Be shooting it right after. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because the... the and are y'all aware? Does anybody else do anything like that? Are y'all aware? There may be some companies, but I haven't seen any that do it to the extent we do. Yeah. So. And, and if you do see something similar, maybe somebody we're making the parts for. Yeah. Yeah, because there is. I, I haven't. I haven't heard of anybody doing anything like that. But so. Nobody has the future-proof technology. I mean, right behind us, we got Silencer Central. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Silencer Co. Right over there. There's. They're everybody. There's. Rugged, yeah, they're all. Rugged, rugged. Yeah. Mike's Muffler Shop, which I love that. I haven't seen. Mike's that. Muffler Shop. That's cool. Dead air. Mike. Like uh, supposedly it's like Mike's Muffler Mike, Shop. Mike pa Pappas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I don't think it. I thought that was a company you were saying, Mike's Muffler Shop. Yeah, I, like, that's I, I don't awesome know if they're rebranding they, or they what. They missed out on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's our, so. In the Gulf South, we do a lot of direct sales. Yeah. Uh, so all the all my other and direct sales companies in the other states are called gun mufflers. So, I mean, that's what it is. Somebody asked, "What is a silencer? What does it do?" I was like, "That's a muffler. It's a muffler for your gun." Right. It does. So it, gun it muffler, I think, is a natural thing. Yeah. Muffles it. Well, we yep. do have some that actually silence firearms, like yep. literally silence. You saw the you saw the hush puppy system at shot show. That is literally a silencer. It is it is quiet. It is very, very quiet. Yeah, I demoed that with the pin gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like you heard the bullet hit the burb. You didn't hear hardly any yeah, noise. Yeah, that's what from he was firearm. telling me when we were talking yeah. about it um, at the show. But how's that going? Are sales going good on that? Going great. Um, the Hush Puppy system is available. Uh, the silencers are available. So uh, either Just through... remind real quick, reminder audiences that didn't listen to the, the SHOT Show interview, either what we're talking about. So the Hush Puppy system, hushpuppyproject.com is a, a company based out of Las Vegas. It's a parent company of, uh, or Supervel is the parent company of Hush Puppy Project. Uh, they make ammunition. And the original Hush Puppy firearm had the Mark 158, Mark 140, what was the name? Something like that, yeah. It had the 158 grain Hush Puppy ammo, which was a subsonic 158 grain. Supervel developed it for the original Vietnam era Hush Puppy. Right. Yeah. Well, they're still in existence. They're, they're uh, still have the trademark and they're producing that same ammunition. So they wanted a silencer line to go along with it. So they approached us and we developed and designed something for them. Yeah, the original in Vietnam was a uh, Smith & Wesson 59 it was 39? A, it was a, the double stack. So it was the, the gun that went from a single stack and they made the double stack frame for Yeah, it. with a slide lock on it and then a real small little white can that screwed onto the end of it. Yeah, and I've seen pictures of it online. So the first model of the Hush Puppy pistols we did were Smith & Wesson M&Ps with a slide lock instead of where the safety is. 
Uh, we took no safety models, pulled the guts out of them, and put a slide lock into it that would lock the breech closed on firing so there's no ejection port noise, no mechanical noise, and One everything shot. is sealed. Yeah. And going through the white can, it really seals everything up. Then the next uh, version of it was Glock pistols, Glock 19s with slide locks on it. Yeah. And, and Aklis is doing... You do conversions, right? So people we can are, send their Glocks in. We are almost ready to start accepting the conversions. Uh, that's going to go through uh, hushpuppyproject.com. Okay. Um, but that that site, it's a pretty complex site trying to take in custom. Uh, is it a 19? Is it a 45? Is it a 43? Plus, I want sights. Do I want an RMR cut? Do I want Cerakote? So it's mm -hmm. very complex. So uh, still in the coding process of getting the website. Gotcha. But hopefully it'll be live for the custom cut. It's probably about two weeks. Okay, so so keep can, an eye out. But if not, take a look at some of the ready to go within the Hush next Puppy month. Pistol. Definitely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, very good. Just keep an eye on hushpuppyproject.com and also supervale.com. Mm -hmm. Supervale and hushpuppyproject. Yeah, and supervale they currently have uh, the 147, and they're working on the 158 grain nine millimeter hushpuppy loads again. Mm -hmm. Okay, now will those run through? regular cycle yep. absolutely great I, I, as a matter of fact the 158 cycle some of the most reliably yeah. i've seen and they're because they're down in that 900 feet per second range 9 950 they're super super quiet yeah good powder burn in the barrel so there's not much port or uh, you, barrel you've been shooting through any of your cans yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah we've shot you done full auto mm-hmm and some full auto with it too yep, yep. nice yeah we've put the little the little white can on MP5s and run the 158 grain ammo through it, and it's a that's a handy little package. I can like imagine. A, yeah, yeah. Like a little three inch long can on the end of an MP5K that's yeah. select fire, shooting ultra subsonic ammunition. <laughs> yeah, you could do ooh, some work ooh, with ooh, that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. I dig it. I dig it. So you guys are rocking some shirts here. I got. I, I can't not talk about your shirts that that you're rocking here. I thought I was going to be, you know, all wild and crazy wearing a, a Hawaiian style shirt, but you guys have your logo on these shirts. Is this something that that people can? You got these on your shop? People can go buy these. Uh, there's a few on the on the sales floor, like some one-off sizes, different stuff. But this is just kind of to to keep Charlie in memory. Uh, he yeah. always wore the Hawaiian shirts, and definitely on the Fridays. I dig so it. So we've adopted the Hawaiian shirt Fridays, and of course today's Friday. So today's Friday, mm -hmm. Hawaiian shirts, baby. So, Charlie's Hawaiian shirts. The baby, yeah. Oscar's, Oscar's got, got one, his yeah. on too. His onesie. We need to get it logoed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stitch a logo on there. I got. I know a guy who does some stitching. You guys need some stitch work. Nine three tactical, hmm. listener of the show. Where had are they him, at? Had him on the last AK corner. Um, I don't know where he's at. I don't know. Well, we so some we state have, that I'm not familiar with. I guess we've kind of had gotten out of the AK world for a while. Nebraska, just because of the the kits availability and the pricing and trying to get receivers. Uh, just recently, we've actually started taking on some AK builds again. Uh, and man, some I got to get you guys on the AK out. corner. You, you've not been on the AK corner in a while. Yeah, it's 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 been a while. Well, like I said, we haven't we've been kind of getting away from it. And I just saw something cool that J Mac has. Uh, that I've decided I want to. I'm going to pull What's, out one of my Romy G kits. He's got a new handguard. I, I told you about him when I did the AK corner thing. He's that was last year, right? Last year, a year before. I don't. Time's funny. Yeah, <laughs> you did it. You did it last year. You were on one last year, yeah. towards the towards the end of the season. I think we had I think you. So. We had yeah. you on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Justin. Justin, very personable and everything. Good guy to have on. I would he, love to have him. He on. loves AKs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, Justin's we'll great definitely guy. definitely try and make. Make the the, the last one we did, we talked uh, German, East German AKs. Ah, this is a really nice. good show. We had Marco Vorbiv on, yeah, which got his book right here. Oh, cool. Well, you guys have seen that or not? But he's going to be here Saturday, uh, ten to to noon, doing autographs. Hmm. Huh, I may have to pick up that. Tomorrow's going to be book day, apparently. Signing his uh, his book. But yeah, I've got so I've got two Romy G kits because uh, the, the press has kind of been in between two machines we just haven't really messed with it so we're pulling it all out because the kits are coming out of the woodwork like original yeah. barrel kits oh yeah kits romy g non-rusty kits i mean some beautiful kits so Good we're starting stuff. to go into that so i pulled two of mine out i want to build one with the occam defense front end i already have one of the occam um rifles and but i want to build one with the rail and i want to build one with the j max new rail and kind of compare and contrast and see 
Uh, they both have some pretty cool features. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I've got Brian building up a AK-74 pistol for me. Oh, full, nice. Full Occam treatment on it. Very you know, nice. Is he going to have a brace? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> Mostly because I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to get into that conversation right now. It's, just, it's so convoluted. It's, it's, well, nobody knows. The ATF doesn't even really know. It's so dumb. But that's a whole that's a whole show. I'm just I. ignoring the whole thing. It doesn't exist to mm-hmm. me. I was like, I got braces. I'm using my braces to hell with you. <laughs> One of the machine guns I brought to the to the shoot on Monday, Joe's like, here. So we swapped it out and put a brace on it just for just for shit. Because I want people to like Cause it's, say something. It's full auto. Yeah. <laughs> so you can throw a brace on it because it's. You throw anything I, you want to yeah. on it. I do what it's I want. It's already registered. Yeah. Yeah. I do what I want. I do what I want. Add gimmick. Respect my authority. <laughs> <laughs> so what what would you guys like to talk about on the AK Corner? What, Whatever. What topic would you like to, to go with? Mean, Our over listeners want to know. We get hands on AKs. Yeah. Hands on AKs. We talked about that. We yeah. did an episode on that already. I think that Wait, was the episode I was on. Why don't Probably. we talk about building the Romy kits? Yeah. We, we can. can. Man, that, that's that going would back be, in that some would be history. Awesome. Romy kits. That's, that's how I got into this gig was Romy G kits. That's what got you started? Yeah. $69 J&G Romy G kit. $69. $69. What are they, like $699 now? Pretty dang close, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you, you said they're coming out of the woodworks. So are they price-wise? Still, this is stuff that people... Still about 700 bucks, 500 600 bucks. Most of what we're seeing now is stuff that's been pe- sitting in people's closets for yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And they stocked just up now, on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just never, yeah. never got built because uh, kit prices have gone... Crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy. It's ridiculous. We can talk about the, the full auto Sega 12 more. Yeah. Okay. Actually, have like have it and show it on camera. That would stuff. be good. Yeah. yeah. Do you go? Do you know the uh, the guys at Dissident Arms? You met those guys? I don't think, I think so. so. Yeah, met them. That would be a good maybe get you guys on together. And, yeah. And talk about. I mean, we we found it as an AK company, so it's it's nice seeing AKs kind of starting to flow back through. Yeah, I mean, AKs have really, really gained a lot of popularity here in America over the past, you know, 10 10 years, and especially in the last five years. Yeah. You know, the demand for AKs has really gone way up, and the the price is reflected. Mm -hmm. Of course, the importation, you know, laws and all that. The restrictions and the embargoes and the bans and all that. Yeah, have have greatly affected it, but the, the popularity of them has... And I like to attribute it to the AK corner. That's just me. Well, yeah, that's probably what did it. Positive. Yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. what did it. Yeah. <laughs> positive marketing. Just need some positive education with it. That's right. Uh, I did find the adapter rings for the KSG SS for the Sagas. Ooh. Nice. Like, would, like three hours after you left. After I left. Yeah, that three hours been. after you left. Although it didn't matter because the gun wanted to be like guns are when you take them to yeah. a machine gun shoot. They Ooh, don't want to work. on there. Yeah. I don't know if that's from your beard or what. I'm one of the cats. Could have been, could have been the baby hair. I don't know. When Oscar was on the mic. Yeah. Oscar Mike. There we go. What's his middle name? Uh, Caleb. Okay. Missed a good opportunity there. Could have called him Oscar Mike. Named him after my brother. So. M Y K. M Y K. That'd been Viking, right? M Y K. It would. K E. Yeah. Mike. That'd be kind of cool. So, uh, what's new and exciting coming up from Atlas? You guys got anything you talk about? Well, our newest works. release is going to be the 338 Lapua can, but we are in the process of re-rating the 360. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to be able to extend its rating right now. It, it, we rated up to 300 wind mag on a 24-inch barrel. I think we're going to be able to rate it past that and drop barrel length restrictions a bit. Um, we're going to drop a little bit more weight off of it. Do you have a flash hider? I don't have a flash hider. Yeah. So everyone, I like muzzle brakes because I design silencers. And the muzzle brakes work really well inside the silencer. They keep the erosion off the first baffles and stuff. Everyone likes flash hiders, though. So (laughs) I had to give in eventually and developed a really effective three-prong flash hider. Doesn't ring well, works with our can mounts and everything else. Naturally, I forgot to grab one. Uh, It looks pretty cool, but we we haven't offered a flash hider just because, like you said, I'm that's what our suppressors are for. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. people if love you want to kill flash, flash put the silencer on there. So. 
Well, you got to have something to attach it to. Yeah. yeah. Well, we now have the Dead Ringer Flash Hider. It, it's amazingly efficient. It works super The Dead super Ringer. Work. The yeah. Dead Ringer. Like uh, so it gets rid of the flash. Uh, it's tuned so you don't get um, the tuning. echoing. Yeah, yeah. The, like three tuning forks over. Right. Uh, it's not doesn't ring bad like a lot of the. That seems forks. to be like the ideal ideal yeah. configurations of three prong yeah. versus a four prong. The fours work okay, but you end up with thinner prongs and they can be bent and sometimes, especially uh, I've broken a couple of uh, flash hiders running them on real short machine guns before. Yeah. Just so it's like much the harmonics work better with yeah. the three mm-hmm. versus the four. Well, you can time it a little a little better too. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's all kinds of all kinds of sciency stuff going on in that. <laughs> sciency stuff. Yeah. And I'm glad it worked well. Like the first one we actually it was probably like the fifth one. But uh, when you get Neil deGrasse Tyson on here. Then, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Why does this work? Yeah. <laughs> it's also pointy. No. So you can stab. He will stuff never be on my show. He's a goober. So you're. You're a fan of Pluto? Um, yes. <laughs> Pluto is a planet. I don't care what they say. Pluto is a planet. I'm not a flat earther, though. You know, I don't, I don't go that far. But yeah, I was very disappointed. I know. I was, I was like, like, wait a minute. Man, I learned this for years, and now you're telling me it was all lies. So we don't have nine. No. But I wait, mean, wait, there's something further out that might be in number nine. Yeah, there's something that's in a, in a larger orbit around us. Yeah. That, yeah. And we should have just left it. And changed the definition a little bit, or just said, you know, it's an honorary planet. It's an honor. Like <laughs> grandfather yeah, it in. Grandfather you know. it in, because there is stuff bigger than Pluto now that we know of. But yeah, whatever. what kinds of orc? Orcs. I just mm-hmm. like the name. What's it called? The orc. Uh, orc cloud. Yeah, but in the each item is called an orc I, segment or something. I don't care. Uh, I hadn't got that far yeah. into it. Uh, AtlasDefense.com. Yep. Mm-hmm. At Atlas Defense on the grams, pretty much everywhere. Just Atlas Defense everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Go check them out. Check out their new offerings, and uh, let them know you're a leadhead. Yeah, absolutely. And man, you got to get those in the. You got to do those in the store. You got to every time I wear got, one. We've got a few, yeah. but you man, it is sell them like hotcakes. Yep. They would sell like hotcakes. I can't keep the larges and XLs in stock. Yeah, well, you know, the the gun community is a fit community. We like to stay. Strong. Hey now. <laughs> you can send that one in and we'll get it all stitched up for you you stitch it up for me I'll stitch it up for you okay I don't know pink pink I, I like pink. pink salmon 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 oh. salmon <laughs> oh, this ain't no salmon this is just pink it's just all pink it would it'll look good on this all right lead heads we'll be back with more from the 2023 NRA annual meeting here in Indy at the official headquarters of Caltech Oliver is a personal protection and security specialist. He cut his teeth as a United States Marine before leaving the Corps to provide private contract work for agencies outside the military and private security work. He's always looking for the upper hand and unexpected advantage. Keltex P50 provides all of that and then some. This innovative pistol chambered in 5.7 has a 50 round magazine capacity in its semi automatic platform. Its small caliber high velocity ammunition is a great personal protection weapon and is even used by law enforcement agencies and the Secret Service. Oliver likes that the P50 has an AR like charging handle and that it can be slung for access and shooting stability. The P50 comes fitted with a threaded barrel if he wants to add a suppressor and the upper and lower Picatinny rails let him accessorize it with lights and optics. This pistol, it redefines cool. Innovation. Performance. Kelton. We'll go with it. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're not a, um, a PG podcast, so. I probably will yourselves. swear unnatural. I mean, naturally, so I'll do my best. Sometimes it happens. I'll do my best. <laughs> so, T.O. and Cody with Genesis. Is it just Genesis? Genesis Arms. Genesis Arms is joining us here, Leadheads, at the NRA 2023 annual meeting at the Caltech booth from the lead quarters. You guys are in the lead quarters. How does it feel to be in the Talking Lead lead quarters? <laughs> Pretty cool. It could be toxic. I don't know. It lead could poisoning. be. It very well might be. <laughs> you don't know. So for our listeners who aren't familiar with Genesis Arms, tell us who you are. 
Cody. Well, you want to know about the company, or you want yeah, to hear about us first? The, the, the company, and then we're going to hear about you. Okay, so Genesis Arms started in 2014? Rough, roughly. Yeah. yeah, roughly 2014. The concept was to create an AR magazine-fed 12-gauge. So, and you're holding it, the Gen 12. So that was born out of a, a, the idea of marrying the short recoil system uh, inspired by Eugene Stoner along with a true AR-10 lower, so a 308 lower. So the patent is a short recoil operated detachable semi-auto magazine fed or auto loading uh, magazine fed shotgun. So it's the whole lower is a true 308 DPMS style lower. Uh, originally when we were, when the company was building this um, conversion, so to speak, they built the upper on a DPMS lower. So the idea was to be able to sell uppers for lowers. Well, unfortunately there was an issue which was the lowers, 308s were never adopted by any military, so it was never a mill standard. Right. So, as we went to market with an upper, we rapidly found out that there's clearly no standard pin locations, curves, angles, no width, nothing was <laughs> uniform anywhere. So, right. even companies that claim to have a DPMS pattern, you know, receiver set was not DPMS. So, we just ended up having to make our own lowers and start building our own firearms to make that compatibility. But it, it truly is a 308 lower. We can. We could, if we had to, build a upper for any lower in the market and build a AR shotgun for those lowers. Oh, nice. Or you could throw a 308 upper on there. Yeah, so actually later this year we'll be releasing our own upper receiver groups. So we'll be able to have a matched set for an upper. So you could pull our 12-gauge upper off, put a 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, or the new hopefully fantastic 8.6 Blackout. Eight point. So I haven't had the experience with the 8.6 Blackout yet, but I'm hearing... You know, it's you know, it's the new bee's knees. It's, it is 300 blackout on steroids. It's amazing. Because I love the 300 blackout already. Yeah. Well, we have one in our booth, to show the illustration. We have a PDW 12 gauge. It's got a our, our proprietary PDW stock, with a seven inch barrel. So the whole shotgun is 23 inches from butt to nose. Holy crap! And then we were like, well, 86 blackout. Faxon's got an eight inch barrel. It's an inch longer than our seven inch barrel. Let's let's build that. So we built a, a PDW lower. We put the 8.6 upper on it, and so it's literally a carbon copy. It's just 8.6 and 12 gauge, and that you can swap those uppers That's on those amazing. lowers. <laughs> yeah. I love how your minds work. <laughs> that is awesome. So continue with the Genesis story. Sorry. Well, we, 2012 happened. Squirrel. Yeah, so 2012 happened, and Tidor and his partner, Eric, they came together, and they, they were the, the – the birth children, they created this with their heads together and their inspirations for the direction they wanted to go. So for our listeners, as uh, he's talking about this, uh, some of you may have seen it already if you're a moviegoer. Uh, this yeah. was this was featured in some, some film recently, I understand. What, yep. what, what, which one was that? Which film could that be? Is it a, <laughs> it's, well, it's the, it's the best. It's probably one of the better action films out there right now. Uh, breaking the box office with the John Wick 4 film our shotgun is the featured shotgun John Wick for the John Wick 4 it's John Wick <laughs> John Wick 4 and uh, he tears it up in John Wick 4 with this thing shooting the dragon's breath through it so that shotgun that he is wielding uh, is Genesis Arms creation here in uh, collaboration with Taryn I yes. guess Yep. Yes. Yeah. So the relationship we came together with Taryn through a connection. Uh, in that, we were able to build towards this relationship and get our uh, be able to get this model gun into the movie. So it's our Gen 12. It's got a ten and a half inch barrel. It's got a muzzle device that can swap out for a JK suppressor. We got a ten round magazine. Comes with it, flared magwell, battle arms, lower components. Um, it's and it's just awesome to shoot. I mean, is, is there any load you can't run through this? Well, that's a great question. Yeah, there is. Uh, we we optimize it to be twelve hundred feet per second low brass, so you can shoot up to sixteen hundred feet, and we we want you to stick within the two and three quarter. It is chambered for three inch, but ideally you stay in the two and three quarter. The magazine is polymer, so not mm -hmm. all three inch shells fit in there. Now, are you guys? This is your magazine too. Yeah. So you're manufacturing the mags also. Yeah. So not only did the upper have to be part of that, but Theodore had to figure out a, some mathematical equations to figure out how to change that shot shell into a magazine versus tube fed. Is this is this magazine compatible with any other uh, mag fed shotgun? No. no. Proprietary then. Gotcha. 
And how many rounds is this mag? Ten. Ten round mag? And okay, this is awesome. There's so many questions I have about this. Yeah, so the magazine standards are five, ten. Then we have a plus two extension, so you can make seven or 12. And okay. then we got a 15 round drum coming out towards the end of uh, this year. So the 15 round drum is about the size of a D50 308 drum. And it's gonna be retailing somewhere around like 145 bucks. And fully ambi. Yep, du dual charging knobs. Charging knobs. Yeah, bolt catch, bolt, bolt catch. Yeah, bolt catch is standard position, the ambi safety. Are you got anybody running this in competition right now? Well. <laughs> Not in the ten inch. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, in the eighteen. Yeah, so 18. yeah, so we don't officially have a three gun model. So we did get a lot of inquiries from three gun competitors because they're Of course you're gonna get that. <laughs> yeah. They're very enthusiastic and we love them. Uh, they also drive the, the the gun, right? So we had an early adopter, his name's Ron Fuchs. He's out of Arizona. He actually built a coupler. Because he bought the gun, loved the gun, but he's like, I don't have enough rounds. 10 is not enough. 12 is not enough. I need 20. So he built a coupler where he puts two 10 rounds together. <laughs> so it literally is as long as the 18-inch barrel. But Necessity, now, right? It's a monopod. But uh, it runs really good, and actually a bunch of other three-gunners have been picking that up from him and started running wow. those. The first uh, three-gunner was Pat Kelly. Yep, that's he really Kelly. He championed, championed it for us. Yeah. Yeah, Pat Kelly was awesome because he came in and yeah. he was like, I'm going to try to outrun the trigger because there's not a shotgun in the market that I can't outrun the trigger. And I was like, okay. He runs the gun and I believe him. He can shoot so fast. Right. And uh, he's like, well, yeah, that is the fastest cycling shotgun in the world because I can't outrun the trigger. <laughs> there you go. Proof of the pudding right there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would assume that you guys have customized the trigger and everything. On no, it's thing. a standard AR style trigger. So it that, is. Yeah, okay. that's a mil spec GI trigger. There, you're holding the full auto, so that's a full auto trigger pack. Okay. Uh, our standard guns come with a hyperfire trigger. Uh, our competition guns that we have outfitted come with the competition hyperfire trigger. The John Wick four uh, gun that you got there, that one comes with the hyperfire on the mil spec, uh, not the not the full auto, but our commercial line. Right. It comes with a Genesis trigger. It's the hyper touch line from Hyperfire. Very nice. Yeah. And and if somebody wanted to pick up one of these uh, semi-autos. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't sell full auto as much as we, we believe the country citizens should have them. Should have them. Absolutely. There should be no extra fees or no. license or Restrictions. tax stamps. That's actually illegal to charge a tax on a freedom. That's what it sounds but, like to me. No, it is. It's in, it's in the Constitution. But anyway, that aside... Uh, what could uh, where and how much can someone get? So our guns for? do range in price. So our 18-inch standard line that's going to be like 2500 ish. Okay. Uh, so you're going to be in that range. Our standard SBM line. So we have, our standard line is different than our SBM line. So our standard line cannot. That's our 18-inch gun, or the three the the three gun model that we we have as well. Those the barrel sticks out of the handguard because it's short recoil. The barrel actually reciprocates. So you can't use it with a suppressor. But our suppressor breacher model, like on that one there, yeah. if you would pull down on the muzzle, you're not gonna be able to move the barrel. But the barrel is freely moving. So the barrel actually moves inside the handguard and inside that muzzle device, so they're independent of each other. Oh, that nice. allows us to mount a suppressor or use that as a standoff device and make contact with an object and maintain our short recoil function. Um, short recoil was honestly the best way to go forward with shot shell because it it doesn't jam up. It doesn't have a, a gas system to foul. So, but there was other shortcomings, which one of those was, how do you use a moving barrel? Like with your pistol, if you shove it into an object, the barrel moves back and now you're out of battery. With ours, you push into an object, like a, a door jam or something like mm -hmm. that, and you get a one shot shotgun. Well, that that's what pumps are good for. So we wanted to maintain semi-auto, so we had to come up with a way around that. And that's where the suppressor breacher model was born. Um, and then as suppressors like the, the Rex Silentium Seg-12, uh, they came out with a, the Seg-12, and so we were behind that when it came out. JK's released there, so we're, we're champions for any of the 12-gauge suppressors that are out there. We, we think it's great. And uh, obviously, there's only one real host for a suppressor because they're so big. Right. It, it's our 7-inch or our 10-and-a-half-inch. Why would you put it on an 18-inch shotgun? It's just you're back to the musket days. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that's what you got. That's true. <laughs> Bird hunters, 
Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm not going to knock it, but as a practical shotgun, it sure. becomes impractical. Now, are you an engineer? No. No? Okay. No, I'm You a, sound I'm like a, an engineer. I'm a jarhead. No, I'm just... I just you hang things. around a lot of engineers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an engineer. Uh, you got an engineer background? Not officially, no. Not officially? So how did you get started in all this, this uh, nonsense? Originally with uh, my partner, Eric who did a lot of the heavy lifting in this and um, just uh, it's been a crazy ride since so yeah Eric would do like a lot of the drafting they they they, the, they birthed the idea together um, and then uh, just a lot of R&D a lot of you yeah. know elbow grease to get it moving Tio, what did you do prior I was actually a craftsman woodworker woodworking yeah okay um, that's what my dad did um, Building windows and doors um, from like rough lumber, super custom stuff. Yeah, like bowed round. So that's my background. So you had to learn how to build tooling, build the tooling to yeah. do the stuff. Yeah. So which probably came in handy yeah. with this. One hundred percent, because the answer no does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a minute, I'll fix yeah. that. All right. So. So you had to be very creative. So you came from a very creative kind of background. So yeah, there's a lot of prayer that went into this. Kind of left-minded individual, very <laughs> yeah. creative. So it was you and your partner. What was your partner's name? Eric. Eric? Eric DeYoung. Yep. Is he an engineer? Um, I'm trying to find an engineer in the mix here yeah, somewhere to make I mean, for this thing to have turned out as well as it has. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would call him an engineer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he? Is he got a firearms background? Uh, no, we kind of started this together, and just uh, there's a lot of synergy there. Yeah. So, so you're in woodworking. What did what did he come from? Um, he was a, is he a plumber? Tech Don't tell no, me he was a plumber. He's a, he's a tech guy, <laughs> but he loves tinkering. With okay. Things and he did a lot of uh, modeling, like uh, model helicopters, RC yeah. stuff. So he had to build his own things. Yeah. So, so he had a lot of understanding uh, of how yeah, things go together. He's definitely an engineer-minded guy. Yeah. So, well, very yeah. cool. Yeah, like like uh, the science, you know, trust the science. Yeah. We, you know, lab coats, ma- you know, engineer titles. Right. You exactly. So you have to be a certified engineer to be an engineer. And that that was kind of my point is you know, a lot of these companies you know they have that pedigree of you know the engineers that they that were behind this, but you know all you need is a creative mind and a willpower to to get it done. And yeah. Outside that's the That's what box you guys theater. have demonstrated. Mm-hmm. With, uh, there's, with a lot of, there's a lot of prayer. <laughs> yeah, very innovative, and you know that's what we like to have on the show: companies and people like yourselves that uh, think outside the box. You know, things don't have yeah. to be a certain way; yeah. they don't have to be. Just like you said, there's no such thing as no. Yeah, yep. it doesn't that exist. exist. Yeah, and you guys found a way to to bring this to life, and you know, what a beautiful piece of art. Yeah, so it was about what six years of trial and error. Yeah, before we got to where we were comfortable with it. Really? Yeah. And you didn't give up? No, and that was it. It was like, yep. many times we wanted to. Because like, we're going to make this work. Like, no doesn't exist. You yeah. Know? You well, said we, we got a phone call from a, an international customer. They, they, they called us up after a shot show and said, hey, we're, uh, we're trying to go towards a breaching shotgun. We need something that has a stock, but it can only be 23, 21 and a half inches. It's 21 and a half, Yeah, right? 21 and a half. 21 and a half inches. And the big, the smallest gun we built was the one you're holding there. Okay. So that's about 34 or so overall inches to the muzzle and the buttstock. Right. So we needed to lose a lot of overall size. And so after I, they said, do you think you can do that? I said, well, we've never done it, but I'm sure we'll find a way. <laughs> and then I came and talked to Tudor. And I was and like, Tudor. What have you done? <laughs> yeah. He's like, Tudor, we got to build it down to 21 and a half inches. He's like. What are you doing? Like, we've never done that. I said, we got this. <laughs> we've already broke the mold on so many other things. We'll just push through it. Just sit back and watch it happen. Yeah. So we, we ended up doing it. We ended up going, you know, trying to source a PDW stock. We started chopping the barrel down. That's how we got to the 7-inch length for our 7-inch models. Uh, and ultimately, we did. We ended up building a, a breaching shotgun that was 21 and a half inches overall length. They got the sample out to them, and then they came back and were like, oh, yeah, that was really awesome, but it, I think we're going to go with a longer barrel. So, so we, we went back to a ten and a half on that. Military law enforcement uh, got an interest in this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would think so. Um, yeah, a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of different agencies. Yeah, so at it. one of the one of the hiccups that we have to get over in the in the industry is is that everybody views our shotgun as a Turkish shotgun, and we're American made. We're, we're made in North Idaho, so 
you know, there it's not a Turkish shotgun. Plus all the blood, sweat, tears. And, and <laughs> Idaho's definitely not and, yeah, Turkey. You no. Know. <laughs> and so uh, all of the inspiration, the, the divine intervention to get us to the point that we're at, uh, we we have the tr- first true professional grade auto-loading shotgun out there in the market. Um, nobody's going to compete in performance or reliability uh, or even just the, the felt recoil of the system. So we're going we're gonna to dominate all the sectors. Uh, with the John Wick film, obviously, you know, with Taryn pushing the stuff out. Best and publicity you could get right the, there. Yeah, uh, yeah. More agencies are seeing those. The Grand Thumb video, uh, m- more people are seeing it. They're sharing it. And so now more agencies have reached out to us and are asking. So actually on our way to NRA, we had a, a sheriff down in Texas reach out saying, hey, I'm interested in having a 7-inch with a suppressor for our school resource officers. We want to bring the shotgun back to the school. That's a great that's a great tool for that situation. There were it, some Border Patrol guys walking around here earlier. Yeah, some Bortag <laughs> guys. That'd be great. Uh, we've we've entertained uh, some international contracts for maritime, uh, like VBSS, so yeah. boat interdiction, so knocking out motors. That's another tool uh, for the trade is our shotgun. Knocking out drones. Yeah, that's yeah. another one that would be good, too. Yeah. Really yeah. good. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I think that there's going to be more options there. Um, Especially with that dragon's breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's always going to be good. Just the fire hazard that accompanies it might be an issue. Well, but. maritime. Yeah, maritime. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's perfect for that. It's also a good flare. Let them know you're there. So, what's your background, Cody? Um, well, I actually I, I'm a, a an end user myself. So I was 2004 to 2008. I was with First Recon Battalion and did a couple tours in Iraq. Um, and then I got out of the service, did some DOD, like uh, stateside contracting, uh, training EOD units, kind of working on their final training exercises before they got deployed. So all right. of us guys that got out of the service with combat experience, you know, I was working with snipers, SF, and, and other recon guys. And we all just worked in that team, traveling between uh, West Coast and East Coast training units and right. working with the EOD guys. And then, uh, then I was a local cop for nine years in Coeur d'Alene. Okay. Uh, was on the SWAT team, did all that kind of stuff. Thank and, you for your service. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, ran into these guys and started building a relationship. Uh, and, you know, just the it was awesome to be part of it and work with them. Uh, it wasn't like, uh, it was more of just, you know, I would do things for them. They gave me some, some benefits, like being able to access some of the firearms industry stuff at yeah. a low cost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he did more than that. He started helping out with styling and yeah. some, some of the function, a lot of the function. What works, what doesn't, yeah. what, what the, what's practical, what's impractical. what the end user wants. Yeah. So now he's part of the team permanently. Yeah. And then uh, after <laughs> nice. 2020, uh, the the agency they ended up letting me go for not wearing a mask, and they uh, picked me up full time for for this. So. Well, good for you for not wearing your fucking mask. Yeah. How, how dare I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them to suck it. Uh, so anything that you guys can talk about that maybe you got on the horizon, something that's coming up. Well, from um, Genesis Arms. Can well, we do some spoilers? This is the show yeah. for exclusives. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll, I'll give a couple spoilers. All right, it's all stuff right. that may not be necessarily pertinent to the commercial market, but uh, that's okay. It, we got we got law enforcement, military yeah. to the show too. So we uh, we have submitted. Uh, there was a tender open for the FBI for a breaching shotgun, which we got. Um, that gun now will be commercially available, so it's up on the wall. So that's in through uh, the competition now. So we'll see where that lands. Hopefully we'll be victorious. And uh, then we'll get a white paper, you know, and we'll be the new selected shotgun, breaching shotgun for them. That'd be fantastic. That'd be nice. It'd yeah. be really nice. They do a lot of breaching. So yeah. I don't know when they they're going to do a lot make... of no-knocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know when that announcement will come out, but we have the gun available now for uh, for orders or teeny if, if law enforcement are looking for that type of thing. Okay. Um, and then uh, the big thing that we have, should we talk about the LL? Should we make it? Uh-huh. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Okay, do so it. Uh, our gun is a lethal option, but we also know that the beanbag option is a very viable situation as well. Sure. So a less lethal option for semi-auto magazine fed. The problem with traditional shotguns is today young officers coming in, they don't know how to run an 870. They just don't know how to do it, but yeah. they know how to run an AR-15. Right. So our manual of arms and our controls you could keep a shotgun in the patrol because it's the same manual of arms. Your training is immediately reduced. So Florida State Highway Patrol, they reached out. They said the exact thing I just parroted to you is, hey, we want to look at this as an option for a shotgun because 
our guys already know how to use it. We'll be able to qualify on the line and not do any extra training. They'll just run slugs next to the guy shooting two, two, three. Makes sense. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's figure out a teeny, get them out to them, and you guys get back to us. Yeah. Um, we've had other agencies test them. Uh, same thing. Same thing. All of it is based on the training and the reliability and performance of our lethal option, keeping the shotgun out there because it's a great tool. It stops vehicles, and there's nothing better at stopping a threat. Yeah. One round is all it takes. And the, and the, the crowd, less, the non-lethal the the, crowd. Yeah, yeah, a less lethal option. So we started to look at doing a less lethal option. So we have our first proof of concepts. We'll debut it at uh, Ohio Tactical, uh, which June. So that's in June. Okay. We'll have that available. Hopefully I'll have some ammo so everybody can teen it and you know, get some demo shots with the bean ray rounds. But that gun is incredible. Super controllable, magazine fed. Now this is fantastic, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to come on and share this with our audience, with me. Uh, I know we got a lot of John Wick fans uh, that, <laughs> that listen to the show. I'm a John Wick fan. I love John Wick. love those movies. I think they uh, revitalized um, you know, firearms in Hollywood, you know, the, whole, the whole concept. And, and, and the way that Keanu presented it and actually going and taking training and you know, learning how to, to fire the, the guns in the proper way. So uh, I think it's shed a... a a whole new spotlight on our industry and uh, it's great to have companies like you representing uh, us on the big screen yeah thank and you we're very honored. yeah we're uh, very honored. likewise <laughs> 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 thanks us all so website social media all that yeah uh catch us up go to the web www.genesisarms.com we're on instagram we ha- we, we do most of our social media through instagram so that's going to be genesis arms llc it's totally shadow banned, so you have to type it all in. Yeah. So and you'll see a little black with a white gun. That's a black circle with a white gun. That's us. Okay. That's the logo. Uh, if you can't find them, uh, we're getting ready to follow them right now. If we're not already following, we're probably already following you guys. Uh, you guys can go through and see uh, who we're following, and it'll be the ones that Tongue Lynch uh, got on there. So uh, really appreciate Thank you for the spoilers. If you've got more stuff coming up in the future, feel free to come on. Love to have you on. We'll yeah. talk about it promote anything uh, new you got going on sounds good we appreciate it awesome. thank you well, thank you guys we got more coming from the 2023 sh- sh- shot show <laughs> <laughs> 2023 nra uh here in indy kicking it at the lead quarters here at Celtic. come kick it with us all right shameless plugs shameless plugs plugs are good that's why we do it yes all right leadheads i hope you enjoyed I think that's our final round. I might have a few more that I can scrounge up. Uh, we did like a uh, a tandem thing with Student of the Gun. Uh, we allowed them to share our our space at Caltech. I'll say we allowed them. We invited them to because they got screwed at Glock. Uh, They're supposed to have done it at Glock, and Glock screwed them over. I'll say it. I'll put it out there. Uh, they're, no. they're probably being nice about it, uh, or maybe not, knowing Paul. Uh, he may have had two few choice words about it, but um, they did some interviews there too. I was uh, involved with a couple of those interviews, so I may post some of those interviews also because we had the uh, James Yeager's daughters um, an interview because his book was out, and Paul helped finish that book up for them. And uh, I think it's four pillars, four pillars. Of, yeah. So what it is? Hold on. I got it right over here. I'm gonna grab it. He actually has the books, even though he listens to them on audio books. I was about to say, like, doesn't strike me as a reader. No, <laughs> no, those glasses, those glasses are false advertisement. It's like, is, it, is this Paul from uh, uh, Legally Armed America? Oh shit! I just knocked everything down. Is that is that that Paul from Legally Armed America? Is, is that right? Paul Markle. Yeah, the okay. student student of the gun. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, we had Paul from Legally Armed America. Yeah. On during NRA, we did have him on also, and he's got a new book too. Uh, but it's the Four Pillars of Fighting by James Yeager, and uh, you guys can get this on Amazon. And uh, Heather and uh, you know, his daughters signed it for me. Nice. Oh, cool. I think Paul signed it over there too. That's the second time that book will ever be opened. Thanks, Marty, for being an awesome motherfucker. Love that. 
It's got well, I thought they were honest people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, pride boy. <laughs> Spout your proud, your proudness over there. It's your double double <laughs> bacon cheese with mushrooms. All right. Hey, I didn't get I didn't get no illness from going to the freaking gym like someone did. I didn't get sick from going to the gym. Dude, you had to. You picked up some schmegma off that treadmill. You know what it does? It only makes you stronger. Up. If you don't get it, how do you build up an Im- immunity to it? Dude, all I know right? is since you had your little Have I been sick since then? Collected, no. Dude, you're opaque. You've lost all color. Opaque? I think it's the lighting. Dude, Dude I can literally see through your arm. Is that a <laughs> bicep? It looks like a bicep, only smaller. That's a string. <laughs> I got to cut that string off my shirt. There. This is a ton. We're talking to a life model decoy right now. <laughs> LMD. <laughs> nice. So you're into a Marvel? you into Marvel stuff? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I grew up on uh, Marvel comic books. Hated nice. DC. Hate DC. Yeah, I don't say I, I hate it, but got into DC stuff. It was just more. It was too kiddie. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, you get some very like broody stuff with Batman a little bit, but that's Not, about it. Like, back I in the early days, you didn't. They didn't start doing that shit yeah. till like the the nineties or yeah later, you know, late nineties, something like that. But yeah, life model decoy. Have they actually said that yet in any Marvel? I think they said it once. I think they referenced it once in that TV series when they were, you know, had the. Yeah, the um, it was on a the show on ABC, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember what they called it, but it was about yeah. the a- Shield agents. Yeah, Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. All right, with the, your Mandalorian helmet on there, to, <laughs> I'm surprised you found something to fit over that big melon of yours. Holy sheesh. Bro, 3D printed. Did you have that custom made? That himself. I mean, he would have to to fit that big melon. Good lord. And we made one for each kid. Oh, all right. So here's here's I was telling you guys off camera earlier, and we're gonna do the jack wagon train. But I wanted to. I may get in trouble for this, but I may not. I don't think I will because we showed it at a shot show, and this is. The new Buckmaster. The Buckmaster Combat Diving Knife. Check it out. Oh, wow. That looks painful. This is a heavy-duty tool right here. So these aren't available to uh, the public, the general public yet. These are only going out to to the teams right now. Um, That's what they were designed and made for, was for the the Navy SEALs, per their uh, specs, specific specs. And i uh, got to give a big thanks to Commander Tom Coulter, um, Rich Nyman, and C.J. Buck for inviting me to be a part of the design of this knife. So old Lefty had a little to do with this. Very little. <laughs> but... So this is what they call oh, the shit. the anchor wing. So That's it's cool. It, it can go in either way. And this is what they use to anchor their boats. Or it could be used as like a grappling hook or anything like that. And it just goes in and it locks into place. That's pretty badass. It's absolutely badass. And they signed yeah. it for me. Let me see the signatures on there. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think I got it upside down. Yeah. So, Commander Coulter, CJ, Rich. And then it comes in on a little nice hefty-duty kind of a Kydex dealio there. But those will become... I think I think they're going to release them to the public uh, this next SHOT Show. So, that's all I'm going to say uh. about it because I don't want to... I don't want them to kick me off the project. <laughs> you see, you you see Ton right now, yeah. That's like right up his street. It's right up his alley, bro. Yeah, he I could, mean, you you've seen the the knives that man carries. He could have another digit uh, sewed on after using this. Yeah, we need we need I need to play with that. We could probably work something out if you ever invite me up there, bro. 
I've invited you how many times? I think it's down. Yeah, down. Down, yeah. Over, yeah. kind of over. Over and down over, a little bit. Over. Yeah. Over I've down invited you over, but no. You want to go play with tourniquets in some field? This is a perfect I... time to start the talking lead jack wagon train, so Gunny, bring <laughs> that train in. <laughs> Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. All right, the train has stationed, and I guess you and I should do it first to, to, to give Tyler an idea of, of what it's about because he doesn't know what the, the Jack Wagon train and Lead Hair Brigade Heroes is about. So Let's do this. I will kick us off. All right. I'm going to grab my, my little iPad, not an iPad. I don't I don't like Apple. What is this? Surface Pro. Tablet. So Gavin Newsom. The uh what is he, the mayor of California? Governor? <laughs> yep. He's the Yeah, he's, he's the, the governor. Yeah, good. Talking governor. lame. Yeah. Bag. yeah. Yeah. So he's proposing a twenty eighth amendment to the US Constitution to curb Gun violence, C-U-R-B, curb. California Governor Gavin Newsom has proposed adding a new amendment to the United States Constitution to address the escalating gun violence crisis his office announced Thursday. All right. What a fucking tool. In Did a tweet, you see the video? Uh, yes. Yeah, I watched the video. I'm not going to play this. So he says, every time it's the same. They tell us we can't stop these massacres, Newsom said in the announcement video. They say we can't stop domestic terrorism without violating the Second Amendment, which you can't stop domestic terrorism anyway. Regardless. Regardless, yeah. 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 It's the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, any of the amendments aren't you know changing them or adding to them uh, is not going to stop domestic terrorism terrorism. Newsom proposed amendment, his proposed amendment would raise the minimum age. Haven't they already done all this in California anyway? Pretty much. Everything he's proposing, they've already done in California anyway, and it's proven not to have stopped domestic terrorism or these massacres that he's calling them in California, which they're, they have some of the highest tolls of mass massacres. Yeah going on um it goes on to say this and i'm reading from uh, huffington post so there you go <laughs> quality news yeah huffing something <laughs> says all 27 existing amendments were proposed by congress and not via constitutional convention according to the national archives however congress hasn't passed a new amendment in over 30 years the 27th amendment which prohibits members of Congress from giving themselves salary increases during their current term was passed in 1992. Don't they do that anyway? Well, no, yeah. they do it through the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. There yet, you go. yet it's not insider trading. I don't understand that okay. one at all. Well, there's a little hidden rule that they have. It's not a law. It's a rule that they can inside trade. Meanwhile, our proposed amendments have failed over the years. In recent years, a revitalized push to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, which would guarantee equal rights regardless of sex, has been met with resistance. And gun violence in particular has been extremely contentious, meaning a three-fourths consensus is extremely unlikely. Conservative politicians have largely resisted calls for stricter gun laws. I'm <clears throat> Because they don't work. Gun laws do Especially not work. Not California. That's not you have to go after the systemic problem, which what? is is poverty, is mental health, uh, is but education. He wants, he wants his state broke. He wants everybody He wants the country broke. Desperate. He and, wants the country in, broke. In this state, you gotta remember, in this state, to buy ammunition, you have to go give your ID to buy a box of ammunition and if they deem it it's not necessary for you at the moment you do not get your ammunition if you want to go out plinking with your kids or go to a target competition you want to go hunting 
and you go give your ID and they deem that you've purchased too much ammunition or it's not the right time for you, you will not get your ammunition. So what they're saying is he wants to pass more laws because he thinks now the criminals will listen to you. Are you kidding me? This dude is an absolute freaking jack wagon. He knows nothing about anything. He doesn't follow the own his own rules and laws that he makes while he's there. He broke every COVID rule that he put in place, every COVID restriction he put in place. Dude, this is what happens when parents don't swallow. Seriously. <laughs> this dude is a freaking <laughs> retard. Dude, I don't get it. And and someone voted this guy in, and Multiple tell me there's times. not vo- yeah, and tell me there's no voter fraud, dude. Give me a break. There's, there's nothing but a scam going on here. I mean, he probably was like a frequent flyer on Epstein's plane. Let's be real. That's dude. well. What what concerns me about that is that California is kind of a lost cause at this point. I feel like even though. There are a lot of areas of California that are uh, quite red, I guess, if you were to look at a voting map. But here's what I'm concerned about, Ton, and this is particularly applicable to you, is that all these people that are finally waking up to this crap but, like, aren't fully on board, and they're all going to Texas. Well, here, here's the funny thing. I was born and raised there right outside of Edwards Air Force yeah, Base. Yeah, yeah. I grew up hunting and fishing in California, and everybody's like, oh, California is so horrible. When I grew up there, we hunted, we fished, we did all the outdoors. California sports. wasn't always bad, and it's still no. not in in the northerns, yep. the southerns. It's but it it's the main concentration. L A. L A. L A. County. You got Sacramento, San Francisco, and it's starting to leak out into like the San Diego area. But what the most amusing part to me about California is. The state itself is absolutely beautiful. Amazing place. You're never 45 minutes away from the mountains, desert, trees, or ocean. With all that being said, all these places that are voting completely blue, what do they all have in common? The highest concentration of people from other states. They're not born and raised Californian. It's every other state's rejects. And I mean that in the the most hardcore, truthful terms. You go to L.A., where are you from? I'm from here. No one ever says I was born and raised here unless you're like five years old. You're never going to find someone. It is so difficult to find someone in these cities that vote far extreme left that are from there. Everybody moved to California because that was the dream. We're going to move there. Where are you from? I'm from Michigan. You hear all the time. I'm from Michigan. I'm from Illinois. I'm from New York. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Nebraska. So all the rest of the United States that's shitting on California will quit sending your retards there, and it would be fine. Let's be real. (laughs) You put them all in one concentrated area and expect them to vote something different? It's herd mentality. You put enough sheep in one area they're all going to run off that cliff together and now they're moving all they're all moving to austin and then yeah it's it's or they already have in tennessee nashville they're moving to nashville yeah we we were born and raised there where we there's a shopping mall where i used to go dove and chucker hunting and then i'm not gonna ask what a chucker is is that something to do with your pride month it's a game bird that flies at 35 miles an hour, three feet off the ground. <clears throat> it's it's a game bird. And so it's like you just put up a net and catch them. Oh, no. Just it's shoot a very a, fast football. Double and, blast your shotgun <laughs> up in the air, and they'll just but, fly right into that net, boy. But it, it that's what I was laughing about, because if you talk to someone that is born and raised in that state that's over the age of 30, they're – as conservatives can be, they, they wanted the state the way it used to be. Back when you can actually go out off-roading and camping with your kids without an adventure pass to pay $35 to pull over on the side of the road, 
Now you break down on the side of the road. If you're more than so many feet off the side of the road, you get a violation for not having an adventure pass. Well, sorry, I didn't plan on breaking down today. An adventure pass. <laughs> yeah, you have to buy an adventure pass. Sounds like something go, Disney World implemented. Yeah, mm-hmm. to go to and go enjoy the the national parks, Bureau of Land Management, to go enjoy natural land. creation, to go enjoy natural yeah, creation. Yeah, you have to get a permission slip, pay a permission slip to go enjoy public land. And that's not rules made by people that were born and raised there. That's made by people that migrated there because they didn't, oh, my state is too cold. My state is too hot. I want to live in a beautiful place, and I want to change all the rules in this beautiful place yep. to what I want it to be. Yep. But it then, but then they go and they place. ruin everything, and then yep. they'll move to another place. They're like, oh, wow. I really like oh, I really it, like it over here in, in yep. Texas and Tennessee. Uh, well, you like it because we do things the way we do things. We don't do yep. things the way you did them back there and ruined everything. So yeah, don't bring again, your bullshit voting nice methods yep. to my state, to my town, to my city. Conform, a, motherfuckers. Yeah, let, <laughs> let me change it all so I can move away because I no longer All right, it. enough on I'm Gavin. Let's it. move on. <laughs> so Gavin is a jack wagon, and his proposed uh 27th or 28th amendment to the u.s constitution to curb gun violence because he's really proven that everything they've done in california works yeah once again there's another child that was not left behind they should have <laughs> yeah. left that one behind Definitely. all right you kind of getting the gist of what a jack wagon is tyler i i do understand now <laughs> okay yes. we'll let ton go and then we'll let you think a little bit more see if you come Oof. up with one <laughs> ton shoot all right this one's really burning a hole in my ass because, you know what, these people are Is that what it off. is, or is it, is it your pride month? <laughs> that, too. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Um, when you watch the news, it is not the news. It's if opinion. You have, it, it is a paid advertising that runs off of numbers. It's just like any other TV show. All they want is numbers. They want to know the ratings. They want to know how many people are viewing in. They're not out there to actually, they don't care if you know about the weather. The weather is probably the most accurate thing on the news, and that's the only thing that's honest and truthful. And let's be real, it's never correct. So when you turn on the news in the morning, no matter what it is, and I've had the unfortunate pleasure of having to sit in there while doing broadcasts and doing wildlife stuff and going on the news and try to teach people something. It's a little fluff piece. But when I turn on the news these days, and I'll be watching TV at night, and they put out commercials telling you how good their news station is. Every day, if they have to convince you that hard, and they have to sell you that much on why to watch their channel, because that's how truthful they are, and that's how hard, it, hard-hitting, awesome journalism is, they're selling you a freaking lie. They're full of shit. It's all lies. It's And I remember one of the first times we did a wildlife piece after a fire we worked. I was 18, 19 years old doing wildlife rescue. And I went to Fox News in California. We were working one of the Angeles Crest fires. And I said to the lady, I said, wow, this has got to be pretty cool. She's all, it's all about the ratings. Her exact words. She's all. This will stick with me forever. First, we hit them with a soft sob story. Get a heartfelt story, something that really gets them deep in the heart. Then we hit them with something tragic. It makes them feel 10 times worse, and it makes them watch. It makes them stay. Hit them with the commercial break, and they stay and come back because they want to find out about the rest of the tragedy. They do. Heartfelt tragedy, heartfelt tragedy, and they make you follow this emotional roller coaster, and she's all, that's how we get them hooked. That's why I watch those uh, those crime shows, dude. You got issues. <laughs> you got issues. Well, that goes without saying, but uh, it's yeah, a formula so. that's. I mean, it's worked for ever since the invention of of TV. You know, ever yeah, since the invention it, it of worked. entertainment. Even when they and did plays, you know, back in the the Roman times. Yeah, that's, just remember, people out there. The news is just like the internet. Do not believe everything you see. It's one person's point of view. It's one person's opinion. And most of the time, they're trying to sell you something. 
And most of the time on the news, they're selling you a line of shit. And usually it's the person who owns the station's opinion. Yep, because <laughs> no matter what those talking heads do in those horrible blazers, know what I mean there? I don't know what you're talking about. Yep, exactly. My blazers are on point, son. Dude, yeah, it pointed south. It turned a long time ago, brother. It's time to <laughs> put that thing jelly because they don't make them in three Adult extra, size? extra Dude, big I boy. Have, I didn't have to go to Target and rip it off a Ken doll that was gender neutral to put it I on the I didn't have to 3D print my, my jackets. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just when people say, oh, I saw it on the news, it has to be real. Well, I think people, no. I think it's becoming more and more evident. I mean, look at CNN, prime example right now, and all the turmoil that's going on at CNN because people just got tired of their bullshit. <sighs> And yeah. lies, and finally, you know, like, uh, but they're all the news stations. Fox is that way too. Fox is full oh, yeah. of shit. It, Newsmax exactly, is yeah. that way too. Yeah. Newsmax it, is one sided. All the world has to do is take a second and think for yourself, filter out the bullshit. Critically if you think. catch the news actually doing that one process, sob story, heartfelt story, tragedy, sob story, heartfelt story, tragedy. They're putting you on a roller mo- roller coaster, emotional roller coaster. Plan to make with you your emotions. If you only take you one in. course in your entire life, take a critical thinking course. Exactly. And know what? Just have have the wherewithal to actually realize what's happening. And when everybody in the news center does the oh, that's scripted. Because not everybody gives the Oh, about someone that threw a hamburger down and someone else picked it up on the side of the road and ran off eating it because they were so hungry. I'm like, dude, that's not a moment. That's like, oh, bro, that's pretty nasty. Just yeah. come on, people. Wait, wise up. I think people are yeah. wising up. Yeah, I think they are. Kill it, me. Kill Again, me. it's it's lies too, I mean, and they know, you know these news stations know what they're doing. It's it's scripted. It's for a reason. It's for a purpose. They've got an agenda. You just have to find out what that agenda is, and then all the rhetoric that they're talking about will make sense. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's what are they pushing, and what's bullshit. on the commercials? What do they stand against? They're from? all together. So, Tyler, was that enough? You, you got one? I, I think I think I got it. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so, so I have the lovely privilege. I normally reside in uh, in in Ohio, but I have the lovely privilege of, of coming to you from uh, the not so wonderful state of Illinois this evening, uh, which is where I grew up. Um, and since we were talking about another Newsom, plethora figured, of mass shootings, uh-huh, um, I, I figured this would be a good one. Uh, current governor, JB Pritzker. Ooh, just, oh, uh, what a, what a tool. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I grew up here and, uh, you know, when I went to buy my first gun at, at uh, 21, you know, buy my first pistol, I had to get a Floyd card. Um, and, and then I moved to Ohio, walked into a gun store, and I was able to, you know, with once I was a, a resident, you know, buy a gun. Same day, didn't have a waiting period, didn't have nothing, none of that. And it just opens your eyes immediately to the, uh, the, the madness because you have more gun crime in, in the – small area that that's not so great in the city of Chicago um, than you do in probably the entire rest of the Midwest, I would contend. Um, and it's just, so, you know, going back to the, your Newsom point earlier about this 28th Amendment bullshit, um, it just doesn't work. You know, it, you, you said it before, you need parents in homes. You need better education. You, you need mental health education for kids, for young adults, especially with all this social media kids stuff going on. Kids need stability. Yeah, and and uh, we lost our way in that regard, um, and we're not doing enough to get it back. No. So, you know, just I, I would give it to the whole state of Illinois, but I think J.B. Pritzker is enough of a prick to, to, yeah. s- to say jack wagon. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. And when you say the whole state, you're talking about the elected officials there that Yeah, yeah, yeah. And appointed. Yeah. It, elected and the, appointed. 
Yeah, the funny thing about Illinois is it's uh, it's actually a lot like New York or, or California, where the city of Chicago controls uh, the decisions for the entire state. And the funny part about Illinois is that if you go oh, an hour south of the city of Chicago, you very, very quickly wind up in farm country. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there are a lot of people that are um, that have share the same ideals as the, as the three of us do. I'm sure of it. Yeah. And uh, and, and just don't get hurt. And, and that sucks. And um, yeah, if there's one thing I could change about this place, it'd actually be that is just some some way for those larger states with massive cities to have a a, a more um, reasoned and balanced voice for their citizens. We used to I don't tell know how people, you do it, but that's what I would yeah. want. There we used go. to tell people when you're heading south out of Chicago, once you hit that dark black rich soil, you know you're free again. <laughs> So yes. that's that's the once you hit that farmland, it's it's smooth sailing and you're back to normal real humans again. And they're, I love Illinois. Illinois is actually full of very amazing people, beautiful land. Until you hit about Chicago Heights and you start going in and you're like, bro, wow, someone needs to flush that toilet. I will say the sad part about the rap that the city of Chicago is given is that the city of Chicago, uh, where you'd go visit, is a beautiful place. Yeah, uh, it, it's probably the nicest major large city in the country, um, yeah. but it's a very very small, um, very shitty area of the, of the city that gives the entire place a bad name. Yeah, um, yeah. and and that's just nobody even cares to help. You know, and and I feel I feel bad for police in that area. Now, are they in those areas? Are they it's doing just, like uh, New York is doing now, where the the mayor of New York is? Um, I don't know if they're asking or they're forcing people that if they have extra rooms, that they have to <laughs> they have to <laughs> allow illegal immigrants access to those. I have not heard anything like that. Um, that's I, that's I another jack wagon not. right there. I would definitely revolt against that bullshit if that happened. In that is wild. That See, should that that should fall. It. I don't know. I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, it because it's not troops. Because there's an amendment that protects us against the government housing. You know, government troops. Uh, it, so I don't know. Chicago Chicago is a lot like. LA a small portion of the city ruins it for the rest of the city it's just and you can literally drive around that block without traffic in 20 minutes with traffic four hours but it it is literally all right just a very small area that taints it for the rest of the area and they're happy being scum I've got one more either. jack wagon. Uh, and yeah. then and then we'll move on. So um, I'm sure all of our listeners know, but maybe some of you don't. The the um, the 4473, the ATF form 4473, the one you have to fill out when you go and buy uh, a firearm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. has you know very well has changed. <laughs> yes, it did. Wait again. It, yeah, it, it just did. It, like December or something, and then the the um, FFLs didn't have to put it in until or make it active until a couple of months ago. I can't remember exactly, but I hadn't purchased one. Uh, I just did it a couple of days ago. Well, I just did. I just did it yesterday when I picked up these these awesome uh, Punisher Trump. We can't. We got to come up with a name. Trunishers? They they like, don the Punisher. Trumishers? Don Punisher. Don. <laughs> yeah, Trumpishers. The Trumpishers, <laughs> something like that. Uh, lower receivers that I ordered from Anderson Manufacturing. And uh, I was warned. They're like, all right, we, we can't tell you, you know, how to fill it out, but just know that there are some changes on there, you know, since the last time you were in here. I was like, oh, okay. So I was going through it, and just right off the damn bat, um, the, the first – the first question it's and it says the following two prohibiting questions have been added to section B. So this is in section B 21 B. Do you intend to purchase or acquire any firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheet or sheets or ammunition 
for sale of other disposition to any person described in questions 21C, M, or to a person described in question 21N1 who does not fall within a non-immigrant exception. So they're asking me to answer this question when I haven't made it to 21C or M yet. <laughs> yeah, that, dude, that was dying laughing. Oh. And basically what they're saying is, do you intend to purchase this, a straw? Basically, it's a straw purchase. Do you intend yeah. to purchase this for somebody else? Basically is what it's saying. And then, right after you, you go through that and read that 15 times and try to figure out what the fuck it's saying... 21C hit you. Listen to this. And let me let me share my screen for our viewing audience here. This is a good one. And this is on the ATF's website. So you can go, you can pull this up. They're on here. Do you intend to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheets or ammunition in furtherance of any felony? or other offense punishable by imprisonment for a term of more than one year, a federal crime of terrorism, or a drug trafficking offense. That makes no sense whatsoever. Yes. I'm, I'm confused. Right. Do you intend to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheets or ammunition in furtherance of any felony or other offense punishable by imprisonment for a okay. term of more than one year, a federal crime of terrorism, or drug trafficking offense. I think I get it now. I don't. Explain that to me. It's basically saying that uh, if you intend to sell the gun or uh, if you're going to dispose of the gun. I get that part. Uh, or any ammo, but that's. I think it means like it, that's been used. Like if you intend to use it, I could be. I don't know. Here. I but have no idea. That's what it reads to me is like if you're going to go commit a crime, what uh, with hell? this, and then get rid of it. That's I, I. I probably am completely off base, but that's just what. Yeah, but but we're guessing. You don't. You still don't know. Yeah, you're right. Still, oh, right. Oh, here's the, here's the website. It actually breaks it down. In other words, do you plan to use this firearm and or ammunition to commit a crime, engage in terrorism, or sell drugs? If so, you are now a prohibited person. Again, it seems unlikely that any such person would answer yes, but this is probably one more thing to throw at such people in court. But look at the look at the yeah. way they say this. It doesn't. Oh, yeah. It's just a, it's like two separate thoughts that don't go with one another. Yeah, they they don't finish. The, they don't finish their original statement. Do you intel, intend to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm listed on this form? To someone that, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It was a 50 50 and I got it right. <laughs> it was yes or yes. no. I just happened to get it right. So, holy crap. And then they have another, they have a couple other new questions. Yeah. Do you reside in city limits? Why? Why, why does, why that, does matter? that matter? Yep. Because they, now they want to know if you reside in city limits because it will trigger the next check if you purchase so many firearms, if you live inside city limits, because many cities have their own laws outside of county, if you live in the county. But that, so that's another way to what's that got to do Nick with. System. So if, if you check yes, then they're going to turn it into the city and then the city's going to do their check. Is that, yeah. is that no, what they're going to do? That wouldn't make sense. It is that says, what they're not I, as well, the purchase. A new question has been added regarding residing in city limits. This room, reflect the fact is. that while many cities have their own firearm laws, some people's addresses say they live in that city and they actually reside outside the market limits. Outside the city. They're actually putting it as marked limits. Would, marked would this be like really only applicable or if it mattered for a place like Chicago where they have uh, laws and things against certain types of weapons that you can own or possess? I have no idea, but I live. I'm, th I'm confused. I live in a county. Let me let me. I live in a county. So I live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Okay, but I don't live within the city limits. So I don't pay city taxes. I live yeah. in the county, but I still live in Murfreesboro. 
the city of Murfreesboro. But I'm not There's in the city so limits. Many. Right. So what's it matter? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it makes no sense. Well, what if it's like a like a red flag law thing? Like if you have red flag laws in I your city know. or something, where then, yeah, I don't know. Those, could be that. those are unconstitutional too, and they should not yeah, exist. Absolutely. What else? There's some more stuff too. What else did oh, you yeah. say there? The new age requirements. The, if a transfer buyer is under the age of 21, a waiting period of up to 10 days will apply. Whether a notification of a form NICS is received three business days to further investigate the possible disqualifying juvenile, a NICS check is only valid for 30 calendar days. Is it that city-specific or state-specific? Nope, that is 27A. Is that a f- a. That's that a federal is. rule now that you have to be 21? Yep. Hang on, let me, let me put on C. my spectacles here. I got it. Section C now contains the following notice. The transfer buyer is under 21 is a 10 day waiting period 27b provides a place for the fl to note whether the NICS notifies them of additional delay and when the transfer can proceed if NICS fails to respond that's the new age requirements but it, would that be applicable i mean that in theory you can only buy a rifle already if you're or shotgun, if you're under 21, right? So they're they're throwing that on top of that. Yeah, it's 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 a clusterfuck, is what it is. Yeah, this comes from the Senate Gun Control Bill passed They've last made summer, it even authorizing more NICS to look at juveniles between 18 and 20 for gun purchases. The NICS must inform the FFL within three days of delay. The FFL then will note on line 27C the date on which the transfer can proceed if NICS does not extend the waiting period. So it's an extra it's an extra background check for anybody between 18 and 20 on gun purchases. But does wow. that mean does that mean that uh, you know they're not gonna sell guns to crazy kids anymore? That want to do nefarious things with them? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you're gonna catch that, man. Yeah, you're not it, because it, because you can be completely FBI sane when talk. you buy it, and then you know a week later, circumstances and you've become you've become mentally wow. challenged. Yep. Yeah. Compromised. I'll say compromised. I just but don't get it. I I'm really sure, don't get it. I'm sure everybody knows that. You so know, anyway, you guys can go to the talk to each other. Yeah, you can go to the ATF.gov. <coughs> it goes through and there's a little breakdown of what all's changed. So just be aware if you've not purchased one in a while that these are there. Uh, and then there's some other sites. Which site are you on that, that will break them down and maybe tell you a little bit more about I'll them? Post it right here. It is Gun Mag Warehouse. I will post it up for you right now. It actually takes you and gives you the breakdown of everything. That's your link tree. What are you doing? <laughs> that you- was the one I posted earlier. Now you're just grabbing that. Hey, I don't mind you posting that one. That one I posted earlier, too. There it is. More shameless plugs. Hey. Hey, don't forget, if you spend over 100 bucks at Pyramid Air and use the code TON, you get 20 bucks off. we, we got to come up with a code word for you to use that, just to throw that into a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day is coming up, so perfect time. Yeah, all right, that's all our jack wagons. That's the jack wagons. Uh, Going to get that train out of here. And now it's time to balance it out because we like to do a little good with a little bad. And we're going to do some Leadhead Brigade heroes now. So, Ton will start us off. Let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, put me on this one. This one is a very, very important one to me. Um, just a, just a, well, holy crap. It'll be two weeks tomorrow. Um, it's been two my weeks. My s- stepfather, Van Wayne Mounts, uh, passed away uh, due to some... A very unexpected accident, um, just a random, rare thing. He fell and hit his head, and he passed away. But I want to put him up as a hero because my 
actual father passed away in 2015 and my kids never had the chance to meet him. When Van came in the picture, my children were born. And this gentleman went above and beyond. He did not have to take us in. He was with my mother. No responsibility, no obligation whatsoever to go above and beyond to do anything. He is of no blood relation and no obligation. But he actually went out and he treated my kids and my family with so much love and respect. My kids have only known him as Grandpa Van. And we actually talked to him right before he passed about how he was supposed to come out. And when my kids got back from seeing their other grandparents, my wife's mom and dad in uh, Europe, he was going to plan their birthday party because he always liked to fly in with my mom. And since they're over during the summer spending time with my wife's family, he would come back and have a birthday party for my kids together just to celebrate. And uh, Van was absolutely amazing, treating me with nothing but love and respect. I mean, I'm almost 45, and this dude has grown kids of his own. He's been up and down, seen the world, and he treated me with nothing but love and as equal to the point where even he called me son. And it was he was just an absolutely true, loving, beautiful human. And he was taken from us way too soon. So because of him, I actually went out and got his favorite bottle. It is Growth Cabernet Sauvignon Oakville Reserve 2016. And because I've never drank in a wine glass with him, it was always... Glass, here's to you, Van. To Miss Van, your brother. Love you. Sound Look like a great man. Up. Amazing. Sorry, I didn't get to meet him. And and stepfathers are fathers too, and they deserve recognition on Father's Day as well. Yeah. So don't overlook the stepdads, or maybe it's just a, a boyfriend of somebody that's serious that acts like a dad. You know, you can. You can honor them as well. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not damn straight. I'm not speaking of myself, but <laughs> not that I want to get a Father's Day present or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> you are. I'm going to fly over there and drop a deuce on the hood of your car. <laughs> you and your deuces. Do you do you need to take a break? Do we need to let you excuse yourself no, for just a second? You don't realize this. There's a present on the hood of your car already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what you about you, Tyler? You got right. any? And that, that is a well-deserving hero, um, that was great, yeah. and I am sorry for your loss because he sounded like a great guy, and, and was awesome. the way that he exited this uh, this world sucked. Just random. Does, does it ha- uh, does it have to be somebody uh, no longer with us, or it could be anybody, it be some- any, any right. or a thing? It could be a thing. All right. Uh, can I do two? You can absolutely. You Hell can. yeah. Hell yeah. All you right. Can make up for well, mine because I, I don't have one this, this week. Oh, all right. Sure. Uh, well, the first one would be somebody that's no longer with us. Um, and Tun knows this person or knew this person, uh, a gentleman by the name of Derek Goins, um, who used to work for uh, both Pyramid Air and uh, and Air Force Air Guns uh, yeah. for, for a time. He was a uh, Marine and um, and passed away very suddenly a couple of years ago, leaving behind a wife and a, and a, a newborn son and uh, mm. just a great dude. Um, and uh, just, man, I, I, I miss talking to him. Um, he had he had some wild stories, uh, but but was always uh, was always good to have a drink with, have a laugh with. Um, yeah. So uh, Derek Owens. Uh, if, very if, solid if this brother. is a thing. Yeah. Cheers to Derek. Cheers, brother. Who's your second uh, one? The second one, actually, in 10, I was talking, and I, I, uh, I about gave, made Ton cry this uh, <laughs> afternoon. Um, <laughs> so, Dick move. Dick yes, moves. I'm sorry. The, the delivery is horrible. Um, so uh, the reason I'm here in Illinois, I was visiting my, my folks, and uh, – and my my dad decided to have a heart attack randomly. So, oh, sure. um, but he but he is okay. Um, thankfully, he, uh, he got to uh, the hospital real quick, and they took care of him uh, real fast. So, um, but very fortunate, and uh, just just glad he's still kicking. So, absolutely, that that that'd be one one of my heroes anyway. So, so yeah, 
Here's, yeah, here's to your delivery dad's recovery. Is he so he's out of the hospital now and doing good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just came home yesterday. Yeah, but when I told Ton this afternoon because I was supposed to see Ton next week and uh, had to cancel that trip uh, out to Utah to, to the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, and uh, and I'm like, hey man, so I got some bad news. Um, my dad had a heart attack, and I just kind of paused for a second. And then I was like, but he's okay. And, and Tom was like, the timing couldn't have been worse. <laughs> he was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, man? He's like, dude, your delivery is awful. I was like, you know, I didn't think about it. I haven't had an opportunity yeah. to do this many times yet. <laughs> yeah. so. I was like, I'm already having dad issues. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, and I was like, oh, God, this really just happened. I was like, oh, fuck, what? What? No. I was like, yeah, his. So your delivery at this time was a lot better. Well, that's good. Any that's more fun. heroes? Is that, that are heroes? Dude, it's especially around Father's Day. Yeah. It is take time, everybody, to go see your pops. Go see the – it doesn't even have to be a blood person you call pops, father, dad, grandpa. Like, hell, my grandpa. Stepdad. Yeah, stepdad. Uncle Any, Joe, anybody, who ain't really your uncle. My grandpa – will be 92 this year the day that pyramid cup starts the competition that tyler puts on for air guns and i said grandpa competition at pyramid air is on your birthday i said but i'm gonna come see you and he's all boy the hell you are if i see you on my birthday i'm gonna get up out of my wheelchair and my gout ridden ass is gonna beat you back to ohio i said, <laughs> I said that's how much right. he likes you. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> he, said, don't ruin my day, boy. <laughs> yeah. Keep your he ass said, out of here. He said, you better send me a T-shirt from the, the air gun shooting thing you'll be doing. I said, all right, Grandpa. For his 91st birthday, I said, Grandpa, I'm coming out there for your birthday. What do you want to do? He said, I want to have a cigar. I want to have a bourbon, and I want to watch you get tattooed. <laughs> Is he going to do the tattooing? <laughs> no, he. that's where I got that tattoo on my hand on his 91st birthday while he sat there, smoked a cigar. What is that a tattoo of? Looks like the uh, Masonic eye. eye. All-seeing eye. That's an Egyptian and, one, though, isn't it? Yeah, I have raw. He decided to sit there in his little half wheelchair, half walker. We went over and got him a bottle of bourbon, got him a cigar, and he sat there. Right outside the window, in his little wheelchair walker, sipping and smoking. I said, Grandpa, isn't that going to affect your gout? He's all, damn it, boy. I'm 91 years old. He's all, do you think I'm worried about a little bit of gout? Yeah. <laughs> He's all, I'd be more worried about that guy's shaky hand that's tattooing your fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's and that's the thing. And I call my grandpa every Father's Day and just say, hey, Grandpa, happy Father's Day. And... He's a love you, boy, and it's just take the time to call the relatives. It doesn't have to be blood relative. It doesn't have to be father. It could be stepfather. It could be someone that was a father figure. It could be yeah. someone you just look up to. Just give them a call. Tell them how much you appreciate them because they're all heroes out there. And let's the, for those fathers, stepfathers, father figures that are there help raising children, and even if that they're not even their own for no matter what reason – they're heroes. They're actually trying to do something above and beyond. Give them a little love. Give them a little respect. It's one day a year. Take a moment to just tell them how much you appreciate it. And you don't it. have to do it just on this this one day either. No, know? because that next day might not be there. Tyler, are you a father? No. Not yet? Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <he's laughs> Me either. So. <laughs> These are problems I don't want or need right now. So happy yeah. Father's Day, Ton. <laughs> yes, Thank you. Um, yeah. Happy yeah, I got ten. two little minions in Slovakia tormenting their mom, my mom, my wife's mom and dad. There you go. And get it out of their system before they come home. Yeah, they need to spend as much time with their other their my wife's mom yeah. and dad and their grandma and grandpa as they can because they're getting up there in age. And I send them there after school every every year. Come summertime, they're going to go out to see the rest of the family, learn Slovakian, play out in the beautiful mountains of Slovakia. And get a little culture. Isn't that where uh, Dracula's from? No, that's Romania. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> so, 
I told right. you he didn't. I told you he didn't read those books. It's, it's the same audio. general. Lead, lead Force I mean, One can't. is taking off. Uh, that does it for our uh, planes and trains segment. And you guys, during our talk there, you mentioned something about this uh, air gun competition. So tell us about the the air gun competition that's coming up, Tyler. Uh, well, so there's um, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun uh, Challenge, which is in Utah. Um, and that is coming up next week. So the 14th to the 18th, is that right, Tom? Does 19th, that sound uh, It's like yeah. next Wednesday yeah, it's next is week. Sunday. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, 13, 14, yeah, like 14th to the 18th. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but it's a, it's a very good time. The guys at Utah Air Guns put on a great shoot out there. Um, and they do like 100-yard bench rests. They do a big bore competition that I'm sure one of uh, the Air Force guns is going to dominate. Uh, they do a kind of PRS style shoot, uh, like tied in with the whole NRL 22 uh, thing because they're doing air gun stuff now. Um, and then they also do a speed challenge, which is awesome to watch. Uh, it's, it's probably uh, the speed stuff with air guns is the most spectator friendly of all the air gun Dude, competitions. It is badass. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they do a lot of cool stuff and I'm sure they have uh, have some wild challenges planned for folks this year. Are these all strictly uh, rifle competitions or other pistol? Yeah. yeah air, gun, air rifle competitions. Yep. Uh, pretty much anything up well for the small bore stuff or the more precision stuff i think you can go up to 30 or 35 cal yeah. and then for the big bore stuff i mean there will be guys out there i'm sure shooting 50 58 72s i mean just it's just all, amazing all how far the the air gun has come since i was a kid you know, yeah you, i mean you can yeah. you can bring down freaking uh mule deers you can bring down Orcs. bigger game you water buffalo I've hunted Oryx, Neil Guy. Well, hell, let's do a show him off. Oh, looky there! So he's showing us his his trophy. Is that from that, Africa? That's from Texas. Africa. Hit that's a, a Texas high fence. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but I don't know I, if it was a high I, fence, but I'm assuming it was. Although in uh, Texas, that was it a, doesn't really matter if it's a high fence. Fifty-eight hundred acre high fence. Yeah. Yeah, so when it comes to high fence, it was fifty eight hundred acres. So what I like about those is you can you can eat that meat. Oh yeah, you get take that home. If you go to Africa, you can't you can't no. bring the meat home. Yeah, they donate eat it. You can while you're there. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm looking forward to is the next time I get to go and torment Tyler. At least it looks like at this point is a competition I have not gone to yet, and I'll be participating in a new discipline. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, we are bringing. Yeah. So we had a few years off with COVID and all the madness there uh, from our Pyramid Air Cup competition, which is in August. It's the 20... 21st through the 24th. Is it? Of what month? August? August. August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it 21st to the 24th? Yeah, yep. that's all right. You can go to pyramidaircup.com. Uh, the majority of the events are full, although our speed shoot will, well, we could take as many people as we want until we close it. Uh, so you can. Sign up for that if you got an air gun and you're interested. Uh, but we run a uh, speed silhouette competition that's run like the, the March Madness NCAA tournament. So you got a bracket style competition where you go up against another shooter. Whoever finishes first advances. What's the uh, so, uh, speed competition? What do you do? Sure. So uh, in ours, it's uh, 20 tenth scale silhouettes um, at different distances. So you got five at each distance. So uh, 10, 25, 45 and 55 or 40 and 55 yards rather. Um, but I, I don't know if you've ever seen like a normal silhouette for firearms, like an actual silhouette competition, but they're usually no larger than fifth scale or no smaller than fifth scale. Tenth scale uh, chickens are like yay big, about the size of a quarter. Yeah. Um, and, and the rams are about an inch and a half in di in length, so they're uh, not the biggest of targets. But uh, guys will mow them down in, in well under a minute. So you got to be on your game to uh, to compete. But so, so are these knockdown that. targets, or is it you got to hit a? It's it, yeah, it's a knockdown target. So yeah, you just hit the animal silhouette and it falls over. 24th yep. through the 27th, my bad. Yeah, that's why I th thought that yes. sounded funny. Um, but yeah, yeah so we, we, do, uh, we do the speed silhouette, uh, which we call the gunslinger. We do a long-range 100-yard bench rest competition. 
and then we also do a field target competition, which is uh, kind of like 3D archery, uh, but with an air gun and a scope. So uh, you have targets at unknown distances and you actually use the parallax adjustment on your scope to range find the target. Uh, and then you have to uh, either dial in or uh, hold over for your ballistic solution to effectively hit the target. And the kill zone sizes on those targets range from three eighths of an inch up to an inch and a half. Very cool. Yeah. And I know I told you the 21st because that's I'm coming out a few days early to torment you. Oh, lovely. I didn't know that. That's going to be not yep. awesome. <laughs> Surprise. Hey, and bro, Artie, they have this really cool thing at their office. It's a tornado or a hurricane horn um, in their office. That sucker is loud. Ask Ton how he knows. Dude, is it on I your Instagram page? <laughs> is there a picture of it on your Instagram page here? Uh, actually, I think there is of me firing the air horn. Oh, maybe from... Uh... Oh, that that was probably a story. Dude, I because I fired that air horn mm. off, that circle was so freaking loud. This would have been like uh, September, November of last year. Would have been a while ago. Yeah, it, it was really worth it. <laughs> yeah you need to follow me pyramid air okay we can do that well we gotta talk after this anyway so that's right we gotta do some talking um so yes. the competition and how many years you guys been doing this so this uh, i believe will be the seventh or eighth year i, I lost count because we took uh three years off because of covid and and well just we couldn't we we got crazy busy and, and honestly couldn't keep up so uh, you gotta pick and choose what you can do and we sure. chose to well, be operationally excellent versus running an air gun competition for all of our uh, customers and industry friends. So, uh, but this year it is coming back and it's going to be better than ever. Is so it open to the public? To it. it is absolutely. You can come on out. Actually, um, we have there's a bunch of demo bays. Uh, we run we run the event at the Cardinal Shooting Center, which is a massive facility. They do uh, sporting clays, uh, trap, all sorts of stuff. But they also have archery ranges nice. um, and obviously their long range stuff as well. Um, so yeah, anybody can come out, check it out. We'll have a bunch of manufacturers there. You can come talk to people, shoot the guns, see the stuff, do the Ooh. things. It'll be a good time. I'll Very be cooking. Nice. Ton will be cooking. Oh, you're not going to be in the competition? Oh, hell yeah. But I you, cook you it every single one. Yeah. Now you, you've got one you're leaving for Monday. Is that the one in Utah, Ton? Yeah. That's the one I'm going to in Utah. Okay. And then, yeah, there's so much going on. You know, it's never a boring thing. Then I go straight from here to Utah and do the RMAC. I'm home for a week. They're redoing my shop. So the where I'm doing my YouTube videos and other podcasts will be completely redesigned in a whole new gun wall. Wait, wait, wait. wait I, other podcast? What are you talking about? Dude, every once in a while, some people give fat guys some love. <sighs> You damn I'm not two time their an name. SOB. <laughs> Shit. Hey, hey, while you're over there like schmoozing the other people, so I'm you, like, no, I thought no, you I'll, were I'll, doing I'll, your own podcast. I was like, you've never invited me on your podcast. Imagine if I had my own podcast. I would have to go strictly to Rumble only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of, Talking Late is now on Rumble. I did start a Rumble account. And uh, I wanted to actually do this live on Rumble just to test it because I just want to see how it works. Uh, but since you've never been on before, Tyler, I was like, uh, I don't want to put him in that situation. So, Oh, that's okay. You ain't going to bother me now, but next time maybe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll test it out here soon. Dude, we need to, because it would actually be pretty badass. I'm just yeah, saying. We'll try it out, see how it works. Um, but yeah, go follow us on Rumble Leadheads. If you haven't started a Rumble account, start one. It's easy to do, um, but it's not easy to figure out. <laughs> I'm still figuring out Rumble. It's it's hard to figure out um, how to do things on there. But uh, I've got several videos up. I'm posting more and more each day, trying to get caught up. Um, so uh, go Let's check us out. I, I want to get completely off oh, of, of YouTube. Quit posting to YouTube. Fuck YouTube. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with their uh, yeah. communist. That's asses. a good one. That's so, a good one. What, the one you just sent? What'd you send? That, that I just sent you something really cool. Do I want to pull this up for everybody? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay, so talk about it as I'm pulling it up. All right, this is when 
Tyler and I went on a little excursion with the product release I did on Talking Lead. Ah, exclusive. That is the arrow gun. That is the Talon Bolt. Oh, yeah, I remember this picture. Yeah. Yep. Tyler and I went out, and we were the first. He was the first person that actually, other than me, that got to shoot it and use it. And we went out hunting, and my freezer is full. That's when I called you and invited you over, Marty, and said, hey, I got freezers full of exotic game meat. Yeah. And you still haven't showed up. But you, that's you still have the some? point. Yeah, surely you still have some. Uh, I only have like maybe 300 pounds left. I thought we were talking <laughs> about me coming up um, later this month. Dude. All you got to do is show up. Got to get there There's before the wifey gets back. Yeah, because then you don't want to mess with the estrogen. There's no anti venom. Well, I don't, I'm not. It's not her. It's just that you. You know, if you got to spend your time with her and the kids, and I won't get no Marty time. Nope. Yep. Uh, but we had a, absolutely a blast. We went out to a ranch, and I got a red stag. Tyler took down an axis. There they are, right there. The axis mm-hmm. and the black book. Tyler nailed both of those. The nice. axis he took down with the Texan forty-five and the black buck with the talent bolt. Is a fifty. The fifty. Yeah. Oh yeah, you took it to fifty, huh? Yeah, like seventy-five yards. What's the feet per second on that bolt gun? Oh, wow. it does cruising like four twenty-five, four fifty somewhere yeah. in there. Nice. Just over four. Yeah. We didn't have a chronograph. We have we're looking at an animal at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we, we we got a whole, whole uh, video of the hunt coming out on our on our YouTube channel. Uh, oh, well, nice. I suppose whenever whenever the guns get here, they're supposed. To, did she ever reply? No, I, I haven't emailed her yet, man. I I got busy. That's why we can't have nice shit. Get your house right in order. order. Get your house in order. So. <laughs> too 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 many things to do, not enough time. I was trying to find the air horn video. I think I did it on just a story post where, oh my god, and you'd have to find it. Yeah, bro, this is. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll reminisce uh, when we get off here. So yeah, um, anything else? Any other competitions coming up? You got some new releases from from Air Force. No. Um, no, but if you check out Pyramid Air and if you purchase anything over a hundred bucks and use the code ton, a ton, you get 20 bucks off. So check out Pyramid Air for all the new Air Force releases. And don't forget, if you purchase anything over a hundred bucks, use the code ton, you get a hundred bucks off. A hundred bucks? Not- 20. A hundred bucks off. You said it right here. <laughs> no. If you purchase anything over a hundred bucks, you get, you get 20 bucks. $20 off with the code ton at Pyramid Air. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Maybe one day we'll get a uh, leadhead discount code there. Well, right so, now, all Air Force air guns are on sale. It's true. Happens very rarely. Go get one. Very rarely. Perfect, very perfect very time rare. to uh, Father's Day gifts. You know, there's Dude. this thing called Father's Day coming up. Every parent needs a big boar. Yeah, so, it is very rare that our stuff goes on sale. <laughs> and then always you can use uh, the leadhead discount codes. But, but again, like Memorial Weekend, a lot of these companies were having even better sales than, than our discount codes. So just be cognizant of that when you're on the sites um, and feel free to use the better discount codes. If you're getting a better deal, I'm all for it. Like I said, I get nothing from these discount codes other than the satisfaction uh, that you guys are getting good deals. And it's kind of a requirement that I have for anybody who's a sponsor or friend of the show is they set up a discount code for you guys. And Mission First Tactical, you can get 20% off. Use the code LEADHEAD. SEAL1.com, use the code LEADHEAD. You get 25% off. ASPUSA, use the code all caps LEADHEAD. You get 15% off any of their uh, flashlights. I think it's just flashlights, uh, uh, any of their light products. I don't think you can use it on the batons. I had a baton over here. Here's my baton. That's just for you, Oh, that's pretty badass. Cracking skulls. Um, (laughs) ASP USA. It's ASP dash USA. 15% off all caps lead head. Factory 47 for our AK corner swag and leddies. And and for those who don't know, a leddy is like a tumbler. It's better than a Yeti. Keeps your drink seconds colder. Then a Yeti, the talking Letty. Uh, get your AK corner Letty there. <laughs> Factory 47, Leadhead 10% off. 
Defiant Munitions for uh, all your ammunition needs. They have uh, your pistol, your rifle ammo. They've got great 762 x 3.9. Absolutely love their 762 x 3.9. They've got different um, grain weights in those. They've got the uh, AR ammo, 9mm, 380. They got exceptional 380 ammo there. Uh, really accurate. Defiant Munitions, all caps, lead head, 10% off. Medicine in bad places. Oh, there's a Mission First Tactical um, tumbler there that Tun's holding up. It's one of their... Is that the Smoke Bomb one? I don't know. Yeah, they got like the, CS, Smoke Bombs. Yeah, this one's the... Oh, that's, that's just the shell. Clear. Yeah, the empty... Yeah, that's the shell. The... The other M107 one shell. Uh, yeah, Mission First Act with code lead head 20% off. Any other drinkware, anything in Mission First Act. Their belly band, their new belly band holsters. I uh, didn't talk about that. I uh, moved my belly band holster. Um, and they've got maybe a, a new belly band holster coming out too that I didn't talk about. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I was alluding that they have another. Pro I covered it up with the, the Seal One shirt there, but. Bro, I might be something speaking of mission first tactical. Something very serious about their stuff. <laughs> their their magnetic holsters. Pro series. Dude, They're pro series. Dude, yeah. You know what? I need to call over there because you were talking about their holsters and how their magnetic holsters are the top of the line and they're the shit. And just the other day I had a problem where one of my holsters, the screws came out and fell apart, and it's on the ground in yep. the dirt. And I was so pissed. So pretty much, I'm going to go on right now and order one. I'm going to call Bobby and message him because, you know what? I'm tired of searching for those stupid little screws and parts to fix the washers. Yeah. 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 Dude, they're, I'm not going to search around in the gravel. Hello, you know how long it would take to get my fat ass up off the ground? Let's get a turtle getting turned over on its back. Nobody Dude. needs to see Tom bent over. Yeah, Dude, I don't want to no, see that. No. Call Bobby today. We'll yeah, get Dude, you one you of those what? sent. Uh, but yeah, Everybody I mean, they've got... Mission first. Uh, like I said they've got a ton of new stuff that they've come out with. They've got uh, AR-10 magazines there. They've got the AR-15 magazines. You can custom print on them. I've got several back there that are custom printed. Um, custom print on their holsters. The dump trays, the awesome talking lead dump trays that we came out with with them. Yep, Tun's got one there. You can get them custom printed. We've got our AK corner on this one. Um, you can get talking lead on I mean, I would be honored if you guys ordered and had talking lead logos put on there. Um, whatever, you can get anything you want printed on them. Uh, pretty much, within reason. Uh, I don't think they're going to put a penis on but they might and who knows you're paying the that. money <laughs> i think it's funny i would dude, do it it'd be worth it that patch yeah. that you sent me i bet they would print one of those <laughs> dude uh, that would be that would be awesome to get that printed that would be the best ever uh more codes oh. here guys keltec go to keltec use code leadhead get 15 percent off anything except their firearms uh lockdown we've talked about lockdown you we got two codes you can use uh, you go to lockdown and use the code Leadhead, get 15% off, or you can use Ton 15, ton get 15. 15% off. And in the notes, put you heard about Ton 15 discount code on Talking Lead. <laughs> Damn straight. Uh, and then we were talking about the awesome Kraken cases, ladies and gentlemen. Kraken. Kraken, Kraken. Kraken. Release the Kraken. Um, this space age alien technology they have with their foam, this memory foam is just unbelievably awesome. Uh, they've got the pistol cases. They've got the iPro cases, which I've got right here. Put your iPro. Of course you can put anything you want in these. Um, Dude, it's this so is kind of cool. what I they were designed for. At work checking out their website that's how cool their stuff is i was talking to tyler and i was checking out the cracking cases online and they've got a, a rifle case which use the code talking lead you get 10 percent off anything uh at kraken case company it's kraken cases.com kraken kraken 
And uh, we're going to have a giveaway. You know, I've been talking about the giveaway. The giveaway is still underway. We've got some custom things being made that are still in production. So I don't think it's going to be July. I think it'll probably be August now before we start that giveaway. But it only gets bigger. So stay tuned for that awesome giveaway. It's going to be a three-gun giveaway with three kel guns, the big Kraken rifle case. We're going to fill that case up. Go to their website. You can see how big that case is. And we're going to just fill it up with stuff from Mission First, from Seal One, from all our sponsors and friends of the show. Uh, Tactical RX. Going to have some iPro from Tactical RX. Got Ear Pro from Walker's Ear. Thanks a ton. You got a discount code with them? No, working on a discount code right now for them. Uh, it should be coming probably within the next week to two weeks. So okay. follow my uh, link on uh, Instagram. Okay, there you go. Uh, Vortex Optics Blown Deadline. They're known for their awesome Cerakoting. So there's going to be some sort of awesome Cerakoting job done on one of the guns that we're going to have in there. Um, uh, Enforce Lights, Weapon Lights. Got uh, stuff from them. Uh, who am I forgetting? There all kinds of people there. So as we get you know, everything solidified, I'll let you know all the details. I'll give you plenty of time. And we'll run it for like a whole month to give you opportunity. And it'll be like through one of those uh, Gleam where you go and you like and you subscribe. You get more entries, you know, kind of deal. Show everybody a little love. And, uh, yeah, that's how we're, that's how we're going to do that. So that's coming up. So look forward to that. Guys, that's all I got. You got anything? Anything new? Hey, if you, if you go to pyramidair.com and spend over 100 bucks, you get $20 off if you use the code TON at checkout. Just saying. There you go. <laughs> TON, thank you for uh, the shameless plugs and uh, for hooking this up. Uh, yeah, no, I to, to anybody out there listening, if you can help out in the, in the fight against this uh, CSPC garbage, um, head on over to the, the link and... Uh, and let them know that uh, we don't like more regulations. It's trash. It's the biggest regulations. trash you had, Tom. And Tyler, use ton, tons code. We appreciate you. we appreciate you coming on. I didn't get you. I didn't hit you with the new guy questions this time. We'll get you next time on the new guy questions. We'll Sounds you, like a plan. I appreciate you having me. Run you through those a ton. Appreciate you setting this up and always joining us. And uh, maybe one day you'll let me on your podcast. I don't know. Dude, I got to start a podcast just so I can have you on there. <laughs> just so I can be a guest. Dude, if if I do a podcast, you're going to be my very first show and my very first guest. Uh, well, thank and you. his very thank you. last show and his very last guest. Yeah. yeah. And it'll, it'll be He's on just going to do because... one show. <laughs> Dude. Just for me that... so I can so so I can say that I was a guest on somebody's podcast. Nobody ever invites me on their podcast. Dude, I, I told know. you I want to do a whole podcast just interviewing you for a change. Oh my god, that would be a train wreck. Yeah, that would be your first and last and only podcast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but Leadhead, you got questions, comments, uh, you suggestions for the show, guests you want on the show, things you want us to cover, talk about, uh, firearms, kit, gear. Uh, you know, we talk about everything on this show. We've had UFC people on here, MMA fighters. We, I've had Hoist Gracie on here, for crying out loud. And we talked hunting with Hoist Gracie. How awesome was that? That was phenomenal. Yeah, that was badass. Andre Arvlosky, the legend of, of MMA yeah. fighting. Had him on here at NRA. It was awesome. We've had NASCAR people on here. We've had NBA people on here. Uh, we've had authors, famous authors. Jack Carr's been on here. Dude. Man, did you want to be on that episode? A little bit, a little butthurt about that. A little, still, little butthurt. Still, We've yeah, had still. special forces dudes on here. Uh, I mean, you name it, we we cover everything. Uh, survivalist. I mean, ten years of educating and educating. We've had just about talked about just about anything and everything, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So send us your suggestions. Talking at gmail I want to hear from you. I love hearing from you. So go and like us. Follow us on the Grams, on the Facebooks, on the Rumbles, on uh, all the podcasting things. Leave comments. I need you to leave comments. Leave us a review. I need those five-star reviews. Hopefully, you'll leave a five-star, unlike that one guy who didn't like the show. Uh, 
It's just, uh, I can't remember what he, what his derogatory comment was, but I got a nice big one star. Uh, I wish I could remember what he. Dude, I gotta go back and. It was find funny that. I though. Troll him. I want to troll him just a little bit. I don't know. It was <laughs> funny. It, I like. I appreciate it. It was funny. Yeah. I was like, ooh, I, I get that. That's a good one. I like that. Anyway, uh, that helps us so we can continue to have awesome sponsors and friends of the show that reward you uh, with giveaways and discount codes and uh, good times. You know, events like like Pyramid Air is having that you you know you guys can go out. I'm sure there's no charge for that for the public, right? They just come no. show up, have a good time. Just show up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the three gun matches matches are that way. Uh, some of these AK competitions are that way, but I think a lot of them are, they're so uh, heavily attended that, you know, they've had to charge, you know, some passes and things like that. But you get your money's worth. Like Shootaw. Uh, Shootaw just happened. We had the guys from Shootaw on last episode and, uh, you know, heard about uh, what an awesome event that was. So go out, attend these these events, because that's how you support and show that the, uh, the 2A community is out there we're strong and we're together so until then till the next episode lead heads now who you got there that's cash he's been bugging me the whole time <laughs> cash is a is what is he what do you call it's that a french bulldog a french bulldog he's one of those that they blow snot everywhere oh cash so cash until the next episode as always keep your loved ones close and your firearms closer and your air guns at the ready. Oh, hell yeah. What's up, Pumpers?